Hello friends, this is Zots, and in today's quick video, we are going to go over every single killer in the game and talk about their best build as well as some very basic add-on recommendation without going too much into detail. Uh, we're going to do that from Trapper to Singularity, which is the latest release killer, but it's possible that if you're watching this in the future, there might be a new killer. In fact, we already know what the new killer is going to look like. Uh, and there might also be some perk changes which happen often. So if you want to make sure and double check that all the builds that I recommend here are up to date, you can actually check my website, uh, sliver.com slash builds or my spreadsheet, where I will actually update these even more frequently, giving you alternatives and explaining every perk, taking information from the wiki. Uh, this also includes information on survivor builds, which I know some of you are very interested in. Now, uh, let's just get this out of the way. In Dead by Daylight, there are a few perks that are really, really powerful, and they are so strong that they work on almost every single killer. If you take some of the most popular perks that are used among the killer um, among the killer population, according to websites and personal tracking, you're going to see that there's Pop, there's Pain Rest, there's Corrupt, there's Lethal, there's Zold. These are all really strong perks. You put on these perks on almost any killer, almost any killer, it's going to work out. So, if I'm saying this, why do I still bother to show you builds on every single killer? Well... The reason why I still bother, instead of just telling you to run the four best perks, is that each killer has their own nuances, and sometimes the way the perks interact with add-ons and their power is not super obvious. So if you watch this video, uh, feel free to use timestamps if you want to skip to any of the killers, you will have a better understanding of what each killer needs, and that might help you understand what's the best build for not just the killer, but also for your playstyle. And that being said, let's start out with Trapper. Trapper, no matter how you put it, is a killer that needs time to set up. You can take the gamble of not running too many slowdown perks and allowing survivors to do gens at the cost um, of obviously losing a few gens, but then you are more capable of setting up early. But I no, I don't recommend it. You can still be harassed. Even survivors doing gens with Fogwise or other perks can know where you are. And I don't recommend you take the gamble. For that reason, Corrupt Intervention is a perk I recommend very, very heavily. It will uh, it will make survivors run into you a bit sooner, yes, but it will buy you a lot of time, uh, which you desperately need. In indoor maps, this perk is also incredible. There's not a lot of grass there. You will take a more active approach, so it will help you quite a bit. Deadlock is another no-brainer pick on Trapper. It's a very good perk that allows you to buy time out of thin air so that you have more time to maybe camp someone on basement, which is a popular strategy on trapper or alternatively just do more of your normal chases setting up as much as you can i would also pick it uh, very very easily um on almost any build now say the best for last is a little bit more complex but this is a perk that will essentially allow you to keep people in your territory uh more frequently after hitting a survivor you will recover faster and that means you'll be able to catch them sooner and that means they'll have less and less chances to go away from where you want to be. It also helps a lot if survivors are, are body blocking, you can hit them while you carry and still make it to basement or still make it to that one hook that you really want to go to. And when things get really rough and survivors step on a bunch of traps, you can quickly go and tap them and then go back. Uh, and, you know, that little time you save for Trapper can be very, very critical. So having one lethality perk is useful, and I think Save the Best Flash is probably the best. Needless to say, if the Obsession steps on a trap, you can grab them, and that will let you save the stacks, which is not going to happen super often, but it's still really, really good to know. On anyone else, when they step on a trap, I recommend that you almost always, almost always hit them, um, unless you have some other plan. And then say the best last becomes really, really strong. No Way Out is a strong perk on almost every killer. I recommend it highly, but on Trapper, it is particularly, particularly good. The reason why is because you can trap the Exigate. So if a game is going a certain way and you can, and you know that it's going to get to endgame, um, you can trap one of the gates preemptively, and that will make a survivor spend extra seconds going to it, maybe stepping on it, who knows, if they don't pay attention, and then on top of that, they might have to wait 60 seconds at the end game, and during that time, obviously, you can get someone else killed, get extra kills, and after No Way Out is gone, then you can trap the exit gates again, the fact that Trapper is so good in end game situations like this just makes No Way Out a very good pick on him, in 1v1 situations, you are almost pretty much 100% guaranteed to win if you close the hatch. Uh, for normal add-ons that I would recommend everywhere, 
If you don't want to go super, super rare, get one add-on to increase your speed. That can be the brown one or the green one. And an extra add-on to carry. This this doesn't hurt. In some of the maps where you need to pick up your own traps on the ground that are very big, uh, this could help a little bit. If you don't know what to bring, this is fine. Uh, the secondary coil is also a super underrated add-on. It makes... Uh, breaking traps really, really awful. It takes a long, long time, so it helps a lot in setting up. Uh, you also can't go wrong with the Eris. They are very popular. You cannot go wrong with this add-on as well that allows you to step through your own traps, helpful in basement and whatnot. Uh, honestly, yeah, just maybe avoid the more situational add-ons like the Serrated Jaws that are not likely to work every game. You'll be fine. As for alternative builds on Trapper, if you're going to go... Um, with best add-ons, by the way, Trapper Sack is my recommendation, and you compare this with Secondary Coil or the uh, Makeshift Wrapped. Uh, it's a really, really good combo for basements, and that pairs well with Agitation. Uh, this second build I recommend has Painters and Deadman Switch. Uh, with Painters, every time you hook Swabber for the first time on a Scorch Hook, everyone else will scream uh, if they're working the gen, get pulled out of it by Deadman Switch, and the gen will regress 25%. If you want to, you can also add Fearmonger to this, and they'll have an even harder time letting go of the gen um, and timing it. But Starstruck here is a really good idea as well. With Starstruck, no one will be able to um, take hits and prevent you from going, say, basement if you need to. Um, it's also really, really dangerous. And many times when Starstruck takes place, what survivors do is they just hide for a while because they can't go for the rescue immediately. For other killers, that's a hindrance. For Trapper, that's a blessing because it means that you have a lot of time to set up traps a little bit around the hook or even a little bit further away from it. And it's a nice, it's a nice perk. Uh, with Agitation, obviously, you not only carry faster, you're also getting a bigger turret radius during the carry, which will make Starstruck affect even larger um, amount of... Um, meters around you so that's pretty good and don't forget that trapper is an excellent hex perk user if you bring something like devour and you get enough hooks to make it really really matter survivors will have to go through it and while doing so they might need to go through trap hexes like haunted retribution even undying uh Take your, take your pick, and you can trap these. Heck, you can even trap Haunted Ground, and survivors will often think that it's a really important perk, and then disarm your trap, maybe get injured, thanks to your add-ons, and then trigger Haunted for everyone else. Deadlock or Corrupt can be another perk to bring. If you have Corrupt, they are more likely to bump into Totems early on, and if you want to, you can also bring Pentimental, which will slow on the game a lot if they mess with Totems, and you can trap it when you set it as well, if you want to make it extra nasty. Uh, this... Um, any endgame build with delayed gates, with Remember Me or No Way Out, or any hex build like this one, goes very well with resetting traps as well. So keep that in mind, because survivors that take a long time to do an action, like totems or gates, can be caught by a, by a reopening trap that opens at their feet. And reopening traps happen more frequently if you have the trapper sack, because they're, they're only reopening the ones that you've set. They're not reopening random traps on the map that are default, because there's no random traps on the map by default with a trapper sack. So... There's some inspiration for builds on the Trapper. Next up is our boy Philip, aka the Wraith. Uh, the Wraith is a tremendously, tremendously uh, versatile killer. There are a lot of perks and combinations of add-ons that are fun, gimmicky, and relatively strong. Uh, but we're going to go through some simple ones. Uh, with Lethal Pursuer, you will see the survivors at the start of the uh, at the start of the game, especially if you bring simple add-ons like faster speed and faster on cloak, it is extremely likely that you will catch up to them and be able to ambush them or even body block something and then hit them. Uh, keep in mind that with lethal, you can see who's running and who's not. So if you see a survivor run, that means they don't have spring burst anymore. If you see a survivor walk and it's a mech, mm, maybe it's a spring burst, so watch out. You can pick with lethal pursuer who seems to be in the worst spot and get a quick down. After that, with barbecue, you will see people around the map every now and then whenever you hook. And this is useful to catch them at gens and to catch them healing. And keep in mind, just because you see them right away doesn't mean you have to approach them in a straight line. If you see a survivor on a gen or healing and you know that they're going to take a little while to finish, you don't need to go in a straight line. Sometimes you can approach from behind if they're not looking looking at you with their camera many times, they'll just bump into you while trying to avoid you because they won't know what is going on. So that's it for info. And then if you want to, you can go the super simple way of going pain rest and jolt. Both perks will happen very naturally uh, and will slow on the game very naturally as you do stuff. You could also replace jolt for sloppy butcher, which would be an amazing idea. Keep in mind that the uh, Wraith also has an add-on called Blind Warrior, the green one, which is a sloppy butcher in add-on form. So do not run sloppy butcher on this because they're kind of 
overlapping. Alternative builds. Uh, here we step into some of the gimmicky stuff, but it's also that it's also really really good. Discordance is amazing. You find two survivors or more working a gen, you're almost guaranteed to get a hit on at least one of them, and also increase the chances that you'll find the obsession. Uh, which would make play with your food really, really, really good. Keep in mind that if you end your chase uh, with by if, if you cloak, you end your chase automatically, so you can farm play with your food really, really nicely. And then we have uh, a hex to protect uh, another hex on dying and blood favor. Blood favor is such an amazing perk. Get your first hit on a survivor, and they will be super discombobulated, and there's a good likelihood that they will not find a pallet nearby to use because this hex blocks them. So yeah, that's really, really fun, but far from the only thing you can use. You could also use Discordance and say there was for last or other hexes if you want to, and they would be all very effective. Another build that is incredibly good and consistent on this killer is the idea of running Eruption and, and, and some perks to support it. So the idea here is that we have lethal, we'll see everyone at the start, Every time we kick a gen, nowhere to hide will reveal people around us and will reveal it for longer, thanks to Lethal's uh, second effect. And same with Eruption. When we hit a, uh, a Subaru and we down them, all the gens we kick will blow up and we'll see the aura of someone for 14 seconds, which is a big deal. And every time we get a hook, that kick on the gen will come with an extra 30% regression. So this is super, 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 super nasty and goes really well with movement speed add-ons, as you can imagine. Very, very crazy stuff. Uh, just, just go around kicking gents, trying your best to ambush people. Um, most teams fail and crumble under the pressure of a build like this, especially if you, you know, have a good uh, knack for catching people and ambushing them frequently. But again, many, many other builds. I don't think they're quite as good to feature them here, but many other builds available. Uh, get creative with Wraith and definitely understand his add-ons. Next up is Hillbilly. Uh, a staple of Hillbilly builds is Bamboozle. This is a perk that allows you to vault a window a bit faster and more importantly, block it. This basically cuts off a window and allows you to play around pallets and around tiles that would otherwise be very difficult for Billy. And you can actually use your chance a bit more often. You can use crowd control, which has been recently buffed, claustrophobia, which has been recently buffed as replacements if you haven't unlocked this perk. On top of that, bang, massive slowdown from Pain Res, bang, massive uh, slowdown from Pop Goes the Weasel, and maybe an information perk like Tinkerer, or Barbecue, or Thrilling Tremors, or some other similar deal, so that you know where to go after hooking someone. And that's a basic build for Billy. Add-ons, if you don't know what you're doing and you're still learning, that's Boots is nice, has no downside, allows you to curve a little bit nicer around the map. And Low Pro Chains is a really easy add-on to use. Uh, it lets you go through pallets when someone downs them and get a free hit on them sometimes and speed up the whole process of breaking stuff. Not bad at all. Now, um, other ideas that are good on Billy. Lethal Pursuer on him is great. As we mentioned earlier, it lets you pick out which survivor seems most vulnerable and which one seems to be in a worse spot. And you'd be surprised how many survivors are not ready at the start of the game uh, to engage in a chase um, with Billy, which will, which will let you get a quick down and then bam, Pain Rest comes. Uh, pain Rest with Deadman Switch or Pain Rest with Fearmonger is always a nice combo. It makes it a little bit harder for survivors to play around it. And do not sleep on Awakened Awareness on the hill, Billy. Uh, awakened Awareness um, will let you see the people around you while you carry. Many times when you go to a hook, you will see people hiding behind a bush, waiting for the rescue. And with Billy, that means that if you know where they are, you could easily, easily uh, set them up for failure. If you're a bit more confident on Billy, the, the more experienced players do favor the engravings. So you can bring them, but you know, that's a very personal choice. Uh, another idea that is kind of fun on him is to go for a more gimmicky build that takes advantage of his iridescent Apex Muffler. This is the add-on that makes your Chenso silent outside of your terror radius. And then you can bring the Leafy Mash and or Tinkerer or other stealth perks to completely lose your terror radius. You could even use the new Trail of Torment, which has been buffed, by the way, instead of Tinkerer. Uh, and the idea is that when your terror radius is gone, your Chenso is completely silent. And then all of these perks become... Um, really really scary because you'll be getting downs and approaching people um much faster and they they might not react to it quite nicely uh that being said um as i mentioned probably your build will have bamboozle as a staple but get creative with billy his add-ons are not super versatile but he can use quite a few perks okay next up is nurse uh nurse is a disgustingly powerful killer and honestly, the only thing you need to keep in mind right now is that as of a certain change they did some months ago, she can no longer use 
basic attack perks. So perks like Sloppy, Starstruck, Make Your Choice, Know It, all these perks that apply on normal attacks that used to be very good on Nurse no longer work on her. Other than that, she's great. She will use slowdown perks extremely well and information perks extremely well. So that's what we're going to do. If you want a super, super, mega, super simple build, Lethal Pursuer is a no-brainer pick on her. At the start of the game, you will see everyone on a small map that's a guaranteed one hit. On a big map, it's a guaranteed uh, chance to find someone that's in a bad spot that will give you a free hit, maybe a free down quickly. With Lethal Pursuer, you will find people out of place healing and doing gens. Easy peasy, might get counter a bit by off the record and distortion, but still, on Nurse, you're likely to have at least one or two targets to go to so that you have no lost time. And if you want to go super laid back on the slowdown, you can have Deadlock to slow down gens passively, no way out to slow down gates at the end of the game passively. If you don't know what add-ons to go for as an intermediate Nurse, uh, you can go wrong with the add-on that gives Mangled effect. That will make barbecue so much easier because they'll need to group up to heal and you'll pick them off. So the Mangled add-on might easily be her best. And the Heavy Panting also allows you to have a longer launch once you've uh, once you've used uh, two blinks to, to try to hit someone. So these are very simple add-ons. You could slap on almost any build and they would work just fine. Now, if you want to go a little bit more advanced, you can bring Corrupt, which is so unnecessary on her because she's already so strong, but still obviously very, very powerful. You can run the whole Pop Goes the Weasel, Nowhere to Hide her option. Basically, every time you kick a gen, anyone near it has to get the hell out. And with Eruption, um, that gen will also lose progress afterwards when you down someone else. Now, notice that other than Nowhere to Hide, this build doesn't have a lot of information. But it doesn't matter. You don't need information. If you use an add-on like Campbell's Last Breath that lets you have even more disgusting range, you can zoom around the map until you find survivors. They're hiding, no problem. Kick gens, apply eruption, you'll find them eventually when you down people, a snowball effect will occur. So yeah, this would be a really, really strong build, maybe even stronger than the one we just suggested, even though maybe is a bit more nuanced and requires you to be a bit more active. You also cannot go wrong with even simpler builds, um, such as this one. Here we have Pain Rest, which will make the gens regress when you hook someone for the first time. Big perk. Ruin will do something similar. Whenever a survivor is not uh, working on a gen, the gen will slowly go down by itself. And these two perks uh, trigger surveillance. That means that any time a gen is not being touched, surveillance will trigger and the gen will change color and when the survivor gets back it will turn yellow so with pain rest and ruin you will see physically which gens are being worked on and then you can just go there uh, anytime someone gets unhooked from a pain rest hook uh floods of rage will show you the aura of everyone as well which is a really really strong pick on her um if you're still learning a little bit this add-on reduces some off the fatigue from extra blinks that might have been unnecessary. And, you know, you really can't go wrong. You have information add-ons, you have this add-on, for example, which will reduce the, the extra fatigue if you miss an attack. So these are good learning add-ons as well. And this is a very simple build that you could run if you have all these perks unlocked. Next up, Huntress. Now, Huntress is a very strong killer that benefits a lot from information auto reading because it allows you to line up some nasty shots, but she doesn't do a lot of basic attacks, so perks like Jolt are not very good on her. She does have a Lullaby, so stealth perks have limited effect on her, so her builds, for the most part, rely on a bit of info and a little of passive slowdown, and we have a lot of passive slowdown here. We have Corrupt Intervention, lock away the furthest gens so that you can pick your fights, um, and survivors are still trying to catch up with the gens. Pain rest and Deadman switch. Disgusting combo. Uh, don't even need to explain this. Whenever you hook someone on a pain rest, bang. Um, uh, some gen will lose 25%. If they're not careful, it will also get switched. You can also try to snipe uh, people working on gens from afar. And if they have to let go for even a second, that man switch will trigger. Barbecue can also help you find out where those people are, but you could switch it out for something else here. There are multiple options as well. Darkness Revealed, for example, would work okay if you're going to reload to see where everybody is. Um, there, there, There's multiple, multiple choices here. Uh, this one here is actually my personal favorite. Oh, I, I, I neglected to mention add-ons, but uh, extra hatchets are almost never a bad idea. Extra cooldown, one of the two, is almost never a bad idea. Uh, watch out using Flower Babushka. Uh, these are not bad add-ons, the wind-up ones, but if you use them and then stop using them, they might throw off your... Um, 
your muscle memory slightly. You also can go wrong with um, mangled add-ons, obviously. Uh, so yeah, do keep that in mind. Oh, Hunters has an assortment of add-ons that is honestly quite incredible. Uh, if you want to have a more hands-on approach with your chase, you could bring the Venomous Concoction, which will make people exhausted. The, this means no mate for this, no life, no exhaustion perk in the middle of a chase. Um, and with Blood Favor, whenever you land the hatchet, the, the, all of the pallets around you will be blocked. So survivors so will need to be really smart and look into uh, finding windows. Uh, many people do not react to this very well. And with the shorter cooldown from Oak Hive, you will eat through them. With Darkness Revealed, you can also reload and find people hiding in the stupidest places. And then you can have a perk like Deadlock to just help you passively slow on the game in the background while you do your murdering. Another idea uh, on her is to lean heavily, this is a very popular one, on the auto reading. Watch out because it does get countered by distortion and off the record a bit, um, but it's still it's still really fun. With Lethal Pursuer, you see everyone at the start. Heck, maybe you can go for, th for some shots. Deadlock and No Way Out are just doing their job at slowing down the game passively without you worrying too much. No Way, no way Out will slow down the game at the end very significantly, and by then, you will also have Bitter Murmur. Bitter Murmur lets you see when a survivor finishes a gen, and you can sometimes see them walk away and land a, ha a hit on them. It's a bit obvious, they'll realize it if it happens to them, but you can still get some nasty hits with it. Even if you don't go for a hit, just seeing where survivors are going often gives you an idea of where they're going to be healing and stuff, and it's a good thing to have. And more importantly, in the end game, you see everyone's aura for 10 seconds. Actually, more than 10 seconds, because you have lethal which increases it. And you can obviously pair that with Blowing Concoction, which will let you see autos of people you hit. So if you're chasing someone through the corn, you can hit them. And even though they're lost in the corn, you see their aura, you can fish them out and be a proficient sniper. Uh, this build will work really, really well for people that enjoy that kind of playstyle. Next up is Myers. Uh, if you don't know what to do on add on uh, on Myers add ons wise, you cannot go wrong with uh, with stalking speed. Seriously, you can go wrong with it. If you want to think about it even less, you can also bring that rabbit, but maybe not in this build because we do have an add on uh, a perk to change our terror radius. So corrupt intervention, much like Trapper. Um, our boy Myers needs time to set up. He starts out as a stealthy but very weak killer that needs to tear up. So Corrupt helps a lot. With Deadlock and Tinkerer, we have a bit of a wombo combo. Uh, when Tinkerer pops, you will be able to go to a gen and try to interrupt it. You might even have a tier 3 or a near tier 3 ready. And that will mean that you can down a Subaber next to a gen they're working on, hook them there immediately. And now Subabers cannot rescue, cannot do that gen, and you still have tier 3 for a while. And with Deadlock, the nice thing is that if you get two Tinkerers, you know that they're they're never going to get both of them at the same time. Because one can pop, but the other one will be stopped. So you have a bit more time. Uh, this also probably helps you a little bit in the endgame, which will be further reinforced by No Way Out. So this is a super simple build where you basically try to catch someone early on with Corrupt, having that little bit of backup from it. And then try to use your tier 3 around the information that Tinkerer gives you with a bit of backup from these slowdown perks. Super simple build with solid perks that should give you decent results on on a killer. Uh, I don't decide, obviously. Then again, uh, if you want to play a, a more interesting, creative uh, approach, you can run Pain Res and Jolt, and these two perks will let you know when... Um, will, will affect gens and make them regress. And this will tell you when, uh, uh, surveillance will tell you when this happens, essentially. Much like we explained on Nurse, uh, anytime you down a Subaber with Jolt, or anytime you hit Pain Res, this perk will tell you, hey, this gen got hit, and it turned yellow, so a Subaber is here. And then you can go there and mess with them. You could run Lethal Pursuer for the early game, or even Hex Ruin, which would also do the exact same thing as these two perks, letting you know uh, when uh, gens are getting touched and putting a lot of pressure on Subabers, where if they want to play safe, the gens are slowly being lost. In a situation like this, where you're constantly trying to ambush them, uh, the Dead Rabbit is a really good idea. It will make your terror radius very, very small. I believe... Um, how much? I believe um, it will be 12 meters uh, instead of the usual 16. And that is somewhat noticeable. That is somewhat noticeable. Uh, surveillance also has the added effect of making you hear gens higher, uh, uh, louder when they're being worked on. So that means that if you're walking to, say, Shaq, and there's a survivor in there, you're going to hear the clicky, clicky, click that they do on the gen much louder, much clearer. And that will give you a really good idea of where exactly they are and confirm uh, that your approach is probably going to be a successful ambush. Not bad at all. Another idea on him is to play into uh, play with your food. 
and try to go for longer tier threes. So with the Scordons, you're likely to find multiple people at the start. And if one of them is the obsession, jackpot. You find them, you chase them a little bit, maybe stalk them a little bit, and then get play with your food while you break a pallet and they make some distance. Keep in mind that if you stalk, eventually that loses the chase. So if you stalk a survivor that's running away and it's the obsession, eventually the chase just disappears and then you get play with your food once you have play with your food at a few stacks say two or three then you pop to your three the first one will take a little bit longer thanks to the hairball which is bad but then from that point on all of them will take the same and they will all last 90 seconds 90 seconds tier three is horribly difficult especially if you bring bamboozle or some other chase perk on top you will be unloopable essentially any pallet that tries to be contested you'll get a hit with your lunch you could run cool the grass as well instead of bloody food if you prefer or instead of bamboozle uh which was recently buffed and yeah any any window your natural speed boost and on and or bamboozle will deal with it quickly and then you have deadlock to buy yourself a little bit of time this is really really good now let's be honest there are a lot of myers players that just want to run the best add-on something like this and if you bring something like this uh, some of the builds i mentioned they might be even overkill you're gonna be doing fine you probably don't even need too much of a build uh but this would work as well. And Play With Your Food would definitely make this even stronger. Next up, we have Hag. And Hag has a lot of add-ons across the board to, to, to support her. Even the brown add-ons are all very, very good. Uh, if you don't know what to settle with, a little bit of speed and a little bit of distance is fine. Uh, much like Trapper, she does enjoy having a little bit of setup time at the start. Survivors will harass you. Uh, same as Strapper, but because she has a smaller tier already, she does have an advantage and she has a much faster setup. She doesn't need to pick up anything. So Corrupt Intervention, in my opinion, is a no-brainer pick on her as well. Some hack players are, you know, are willing to let Subaru stay on gens as a bit of a gamble and then they'll set up themselves. You can try it, but I think for most hacks, Corrupt is still really, really good. Deadlock, for the same reason as Strapper, buys you time. If Subaru's uh, can do a gem for a little bit. Yeah, they might try to heal or whatever, but that's time when you are setting up and it's typically in your favor. Sloppy is an amazing perk for the survivors to heal very slowly and potentially get caught and ambush or try to go for teammates and step on traps when they really, really shouldn't. If you have a team that's fully injured um, and they cannot seem to get their health back, then one person on the hook is a horrible, horrible thing. No one can do anything about it and any risk could result in multiple people down. Also, when people are on the ground and they try to pick each other up, Sloppy also slows them down, which is a big deal. And know it, especially if you use distance add-ons, is disgusting. You can pre-trap exigates near the end of the game, and people still fall to this to this day. You can even trap the know it itself, and it's very disgusting because every time you teleport and hit, that's an insta down with it. And the extra little bit of speed from know it will counter things like hope and made for this a little bit as well, which you will appreciate. This is a stupid, useful build. I don't think you, you run this every time, you'll win most of your games, no problem. If you want to lean a little bit more into the ambush playstyle, Monitor and Abuse is still a really popular pick. We're going to kick her up. And then Sloppy Nurses will allow you to see people heal and ambush them very effectively. Uh, you see them uh, at 20... 20 Eight meters, but your terror radius is only 16 meters with monitor, which is a big deal. It means you can get really, really close. Uh, add-ons uh, to go with this. It doesn't really matter, honestly. Uh, you can go with add-ons that give you information, which is nice. You can go with the Rusty Shackles, which creates a lot of chaos, and it's a very popular pick. Maybe her best add-on. Um, and Sloppy Butcher, obviously, here is doing a lot of the carrying as well. Uh, Dark Devotion is also a popular pick among hack mains to create chaos instead of monitor and abuse. Uh, but monitor is really, really nice. It also makes it so that if you chase a swap for a little bit and then immediately drop chase, the sudden difference in, in, in terror radius often messes with them, allows you to get back to setting up traps. This is a classic build that has worked for a very long time and still holds up to this day. A more modern approach that you might find useful is this one. If you're struggling with conventional hack builds, I do recommend this one, and I think we have a video on it if you want to look it up. With Save the Best for Last, which is also a top pick on hack, you can hit a survivor, and then if they trigger a trap almost immediately, because you recover so fast, you can teleport also almost immediately and hit them again. So it allows you to make your traps a lot more spaced out uh, sorry, a lot, a lot, a lot less spaced out, and keep them all close. And survivors triggering multiple traps in chase can result in you getting multiple hits very, 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 very quickly, which is really, really dangerous. And the idea is that we're gonna pair this with blood favor and I'm dying, and this is gonna help us in the first chase a lot. You will hit a survivor, 
Uh, now, if the survivor is smart, they're going to be like, ooh, I don't want to go back to that area where she set up more traps. I'm going to go back to my safety area. But that safety area might not be that safe with Blood Favor because the pallets get blocked. Very simple stuff. If you get your first down, you can snowball from there. If they try to do the totems, you have Pentimento, which you can then trap, which will give you a massive slowdown for the rest of the game until they get rid of it, if they manage to do that. So, a build like this is an alternative to the classics, but still works fairly well. Next up is Doctor. And Doctor, uh, much like Wraith, is a very versatile killer. You should definitely understand his add-ons and study them and try different things. You can even play him as a stealth killer with, with double calm and monitor and abuse. You can play him in so many different ways. Um, but we're going to go over some of the most effective ones. This build right here is a combination of the two builds that I use for my largest win stick that I got on him. Uh, the combination of Discordance and Save the Best for Last is deadly. With Discordance, you're guaranteed to shock or uh, rather blast two or more people, which will put everyone on madness uh, immediately. Uh, this will be good later, we'll, we'll understand why. And also find non-obsession so that you can start getting Say the Best for Last. Say the Best for Last on Doctor is extremely mean. There are many situations where one hit leads into a, a shock into another hit and survivors have very little counterplay, especially if you have range, especially if you have discipline. Uh, two of the add-ons that are basically his best that can go on any build. With discipline, you have a nice side effect, but more importantly, when you shock a survivor, they scream f faster. It, there's less delay, which makes your power in chase a lot more reliable. Anytime you down the survivor, Jolt will trigger and hit stuff around you. You could switch Jolt for Noed or some other more impactful perk, and that would still be really, really good. Sloppy Butcher, if you prefer that. And here's the, the absolute joy of the crown. Merciless Storm. Merciless Storm on Doctor is downright his best perk, in my opinion. Um, if a survivor is doing a gen and they get to the end, they will get a bunch of skill checks. Now, these skill checks for the average survivor are a little bit hard, but, you know, a survivor that's beyond average, a little bit better, will hit them consistently. However, if you put that survivor in Madness tier, um, tier 2 or tier 3, well, if they're in tier 3, clearly they, they can do gens, but if they're in tier 1 and special in tier 2, then the skill checks be be begin to be reversed and begin to switch places, and even people like me with thousands of hours cannot hit them consistently. With Merciless Storm, you basically add 20 plus seconds on each gen that they do, if you play it well, which is crazy good, crazy, crazy good. You can make a build that leans more heavily into this by running Discipline, good add-on, and Quinn to make the, the madness even harder to avoid. Then we're gonna run Pain Resonance and Demon Switch. Pain, Demon Switch is an amazing perk on Doctor because his blast can force people out of gens and triggering it. And then we have Unnerving and Merciless, or Lullaby and Merciless. Unnerving will make the skill checks not difficult, just downright impossible. And Lullaby, if you prefer it, will make it so that the skill checks come with less of a warning and they lose more of the gen. So if they lose a miss, if they miss a skill check on Merciless Storm, the gen will be blocked for 20 seconds, yes, but it will also lose 10 and then 6% extra from the Labai. A build like this is absolutely disgusting and a complete noob stomper. Alternatively, it's not a crazy idea to go for a more gen kick oriented build. We have Corrupt Intervention, obviously a good pick, strong perk, and then three lane Tremors, right? And the idea here is that if a gen is being done, we can hook and then, up, then kick it with pop and apply Eruption, which is always going to be good. Eruption will make the gen explode when you down someone else. Pop will make it take a huge chunk off when you hook someone. But here's the thing with Thrilling Tremors. You can use this in a really smart way, right? So what can happen is, let's say there's a gen that's 80%, right? And you've hit it with Eruption. You down someone, oh, they scream. Then you pick up immediately, bam, Thrilling Tremors blocks it and now they can work on it for a little while. If you don't have a option, you can still use your power. So say there's two survivors on a building and they're working on a gen that you can't reach and you down someone, you can immediately do a blast, psh, they scream, and during that few seconds where they scream, you pick up and Thrilling Tremors will block that gen and then you have time to go and hit it with pop and eruption. Even if the gen is 99, they can't really do anything about it because it's blocked for 16 seconds. This kind of build really works well on Doctor. Give it a try, but as I said, there's quite a few other options on the table for you. Next up is Cannibal. Now, keep in mind, uh, Cannibal is a killer that is easy to pick up, but also very difficult to master. 
and if you go the route of mastering him, you will probably want to understand his add-ons deeply and run something like this, which will make his Xian a lot more threatening. A corrupt intervention is a no-brainer pick on a killer like this. You want people not to spread out on gens, you want them to really waste a lot of time uh, while you do your chases, so it's a great pick on him. And for similar reasons as, uh, as why we mentioned uh, this perk on Billy, Bamboozle is also really good on Cannibal. Uh, Bamboozle would let you block Shaq, block uh, jungle gyms, block a lot of windows that would normally be very difficult for you to hit consistently um, with your power or downright impossible. And then Subabas had to play around pallets. And when they play around pallets, number one, they make mistakes. Number two, the pallets run out and eventually they go down. Now, the best thing Subabas can do, as I mentioned, is basically to split up and make your chancel not that fearsome go away from gen so that you can defend one thing or two things at once um so that lock tinkerer can be an interesting simple way of making sure that if they split up the gens are not going to be as efficient because they're going to be stepping on each other's toes and also that you'll have a chance to stop the gens and maybe get an insta down i don't know what it is with tinkerer but i swear on my average match tinkerer gets me a down every single time by survivors that do not call it out keep in mind that the more advanced teams will expect it and even call it out and they might even bait you with it but if you are playing against the average i think tinkerer is a great simple choice on him other ideas you can have lethal to the so that you can find the most suitable candidate to be hook first at the start of the game that would also make nowhere to hide a little bit stronger uh, and pop is a good idea as well. We can also bring Bamboozle to help with our weakness. Keep in mind, if you don't have Bamboozle, Crowd Control or the recently buffed Claustrophobia are also decent alternatives. Uh, an idea that also works really well is just to go crazy on the Crowd Control, uh, defend it with Undying, and then have something like Ruin and Discordance. With Discordance, you are constantly targeting the biggest groups of people and making them split up and making the gentles regress and the windows automatically block. Uh, that being said, uh, try out stealth builds, try out builds that complement some of his add-ons, but keep in mind that against the best survivors, you'll probably want to bring good old reliable. And hooray, this add-on, by the way, is no longer bugs, so happy to, happy to mention that if you didn't read the patch notes. Next up, on Freddy. Oh, dude. Uh, Freddy has a lot of options, and depending on the skill level of your opponent, some of them will be more or less um, appealing. Um, the developers seem convinced that the uh, that the add-ons on Freddy that make him have dream pallets are the best uh, or that they're better than the snares I highly highly suggest that you do not listen to them I don't think it's true um, but now uh, for a simple build that works really really well um, for we're gonna go with three slowdowns and one tracking perk uh, the idea with jolt pop and eruption is that when you down a survivor the gents around you will be hit by jolt and then you can decide where to go next. When you pick up the survivor, the gens around you will be blocked, which means they can come and easily tap them to undo the jolt. And then you will see which gens in the distance are not being uh, are, are not being left alone, they're being done because they're not being blocked by thrilling jammers. So then you teleport there, you kick it with pop, which is huge, and you apply eruption, which will also be huge if later you get a down. And you compare this with add-ons to teleport faster. I don't think these are incredible or anything, but they're not bad. The add-ons to apply blindness are also not bad. You know, you can go with this. Heck, if you want to, this could even work with pallet add-ons if you are so inclined, although I don't personally recommend them. Uh, another idea that you can lean into that is actually fairly strong on Freddy is Skill Check Freddy. You can run the add-on, the paintbrush, to make them not wake up from missed skill checks, which is super key. And then one of the three add-ons that makes them have bigger penalties if they miss a skill check. And then... We can run Corrupt Intervention, we can run Lullaby, which will also punish them for missing skill checks and make the warning of skill checks harder to hit. And then you have something like Tinkerer and Merciless Storm, or Tinkerer and Overcharge, or, you know, Overcharge and Merciless Storm. And what this will do is give a lot of skill checks from Overcharge, from Merciless, uh, that if missed, will not even wake up the survivor and will give a massive penalty. This is extremely rough against intermediate players so a great build to aim for if you're versing that type of player keep in mind that merciless storm is not so hard on freddy but if you have lullaby or if you have tinkerer like we suggested originally you can immediately know when a gen is about to be in this stage and then teleport to it and mess with them a little bit which is something that you want to do often with freddy uh, if you want to play a more laid-back, super chill build we have basic perks like this we have corrupt and deadlock to passively slow on the game 
red paintbrush so that everyone starts to sleep. You have a faster teleport from the get-go and you can use your power right away. A unicorn block, you can put snares everywhere and anytime someone steps on this or the brown version of it, which is still pretty good, they will be blind for 60 or 90 seconds. And this is pretty this is pretty good actually. This is actually pretty decent. That means that if you down Survivor that's that dropped the pallet, a fake one, or stepped on snare, for the whole duration of their hook, they do not see their teammates. So when they come off the hook, they don't know where everyone is, and they are probably suffering as a result in terms of coordination. And then you have the combo of enduring and spirit fury. You go through the pallets, bang, uh, they drop them on you. Who cares? You don't really give an F. Eventually they will break and you can get free hits with Spirit Fury. Simple build for a simple killer, though his strength mostly lays on using gen, um, gen related perks, that's absolutely for sure. Next up, we have Pig, and Pig has a lot of diabolical builds that you can use on her. Uh, let's start with a simple one that will work with simple add-ons to increase your crouching a bit and your ambush a bit, and simple add-ons to increase your slowdown a bit. This, however, would also work without any add-ons, so just letting you know. We're gonna have the combination of Deadlock and Tinkerer. Deadlock and Tinkerer is really, really good on pick. You would think that a killer with stealth would not need Tinkerer, but the information alone is really good. And she's a rather quiet character, so she can quite literally walk up to people and uh, and join him off a gen. Uh, the, the stealth that you get from Tinkerer might also help you to catch other people that are not on a gen necessarily. So it's really not bad at all. With Deadlock, that means the gens will not be popping quick succession. For example, in the end, at the end of the game, let's say that you have a trap left and there's two gens left and both of them are about to be done. Well, thanks to that lock, if one of them pops, you have a good 30 seconds to down someone, put a trap, and then the other one pops. But that means that you get that trap active, which will make the end game much harder. This will be further enhanced by No Way Out or No It, as you can imagine. Say the best for last. Uh, is a great perk here. Um, what this perk will do for you is basically make it so that you become much deadlier in the mid game when survivors are probably the most troubled by your power. Uh, if you find the obsession and you want to, you can use your power on them if it's super free to avoid losing stacks. Though, you know, be careful about that. Don't make it too obvious and too and too stupid. Don't miss attacks. Uh, and yeah, say the best for last. It's just a great pick on her. Sloppy, Jolt, or some other um, simple perk would also work quite well here. Now, here we have a variation of, of the perk. We have Discordance to find non-obsessions. We're still leaning on the save for less idea, same information as before. And the idea here is that when we hit a survivor, we're gonna recover faster, the more stacks the better, and they will not have pallets around them, thanks to blood favor. That means they need to be really, really careful and your first down could happen really, really quickly. Uh, Jolt will eventually also be a big deal. And what we're doing here is bringing the Crate of Gears and Tamper Timer. If they are stupid enough to go down early and pop a gen early, the person that has to search will need uh, a bit of luck. Because with this, they have 2 minutes 10 seconds, and it takes a long time to do 4 searches. If they have to do 3 or 4 searches, and you interrupt them even a little, they are 100% going to die. And if the teams are... Uh, and since the RNG is now fixed on pick, bringing this gives you a very, very good chance that either every game someone is going to die for free, pretty much, or if they don't die, they will have to make great sacrifices not to. So I think that's a pretty significant thing and something to something to consider uh, bringing. These are just really, really mean add-ons. Uh, but they're not the only ones that you can bring. You can bring a perk like Lethal and, and Face the Darkness. Since she has a terror radius that can be retracted, almost anyone at any given point could be outside your terror radius and screaming. This screaming perk is also really mean because it interrupts people from boxes. So you could bring this also with the add-ons that we mentioned earlier, and it would make it even harder. And then we can have Devour Hope as well. So with Face the Darkness, you will have a perk that constantly gives them away. Um, a perk that threatens to do a lot of damage and they need to get rid of. And if they get rid of either of these perks, then you can hit them with Pentimento. Bang! And to help with your early game, you have Lethal Pursuer to see them at any given... Uh, to see them uh, at the start and choose any given target that seems juicy enough. And then you could run the videotape and roster number two to make their early game very difficult since they have to deal with you, they have to deal with the perks that you'll soon be throwing at them, but also they need to remove their traps. And for the late game, you have Pentimento if they did totems, which they'll probably have to. So lots of, lots of build variety on her, but these are some of the most uh, effective ones I could come up with. Next up, we have the Clown. 
I think that the same idea that we brought up on Doctor works really well on him. Discordant, say the best for last, is an amazing combo. You will find people out of one of... There will be two, or three, or all of them in one gen. Thanks to the Scordons, you'll know that. And at least one of them is guaranteed not to be the obsession, just by very definition. So that means you can chase that person, you say the best for last, and be an actual menace in the mid game. Anytime you down someone, Painress and Jolt will do their job, and you have a very, very simple build to go with a very, very simple power. If you don't know what to run, extra bottles is always nice. Just be sure not to spam them. If you bring extra ones and use them poorly, it's not gonna help. And the extra slowdown uh, Flask of Bleach is also a solid choice. A more nuanced build uh, would include something like Cigar Box and either extra, either Garish Makeup Kit to increase it or extra bottles. This would also, oh my bad. This would also work really well with the uh, cigar box. The cigar box, uh, I'm sorry I took it out, will show you the auto of people. And this is extremely useful with slowdown perks like Corrupt and Deadlock because survivors are prevented from doing gens and they're gonna try to sneak past you and you will be able to find them. Um, needless to say, with Deadlock and especially Noid at the end of the game, you can throw a yellow bottle and go around and find people that are trying to hide around you. Very effective and defend the Noid. And Tanshin Tactics is a perk that comes as a recommendation from a top clan player, and I do see why. This perk, especially if you have extra bottles, allows you to play very aggressively and almost immediately recognize what situation you're in. Um, you can immediately know uh, where a survivor can or cannot run. If a survivor is very clearly in the open, save your bottles, go for a normal hit. If a survivor has one pallet and you see that you can slow them down before they get there, and that will come with experience, Sanshin Tactics will tell you exactly what to do. If you notice that a survivor is running towards a place that is somewhat familiar and you see a pallet but you think you can play around it, as you approach it, you can preemptively throw a yellow bottle, then get the speed boost, and if the survivor runs out, you will catch up with a purple, and if the survivor stays, you can put a purple and you'll beat them around the loop. So Xanthian Tactics basically gives you a premonition of what is to come, a somewhat uh, early reading of what the next situation will be so that you can be prepared for it, and it works out pretty well, and I do think it's a pretty fantastic beginner to intermediate to even advance perk on him, so that's why it's maybe the only character you'll see us recommend this perk on. Another idea on Clown is to go nuts on the Hexes. You can bring Haunted, Devour, Undying. If your first chases are good, and survivors are soon to be threatened by Hunt, uh, by Devour Hope, uh, giving you insta down. This will be really, really mean. Uh, if they find a totem and they do it, it's always going to be Undying. So you'll never lose Devour in one cleanse. They'll need to cleanse at least two. And if they're unlucky, they will hit Haunted Ground, which is going to put them in a bad spot. If they're very unlucky, they will hit Haunted Ground twice because Undying will protect it. So this could give you Haunted, Haunted, that is two minutes of insta down, and they still have to deal with Devour. And during all those insta downs, you just have Jolt in the background or some other simple perk to help you out and not have to worry too much. This would go really well with any add ons that aren't insta down, obviously, and even with the Mangle one, because they'll really not, they'll be stuck between a rock and a hard place. Um, the, as you might see, the idea behind Clown is that yes, you need slow down perks, but also you need to make each of your hits really, really count. So here we have insta down, insta down. Here we have um, insta down uh, from Noet and a lot of information to back it up. And here we have no insta down, but also a lethality perk. So you want to bring lethality perks, perks that let you get uh, fa faster downs. Um, on almost any one of your builds to make the clown really, really shine. Another perk that got recently buffed that um, is also recommended by a top clown player is Coup de Grass, which will let you, in combination with your bottles, will let you get hits almost anywhere. And it's a nice perk that got buffed recently. Next up is Spirit. Now, keep in mind, Spirit's add-ons got changed recently. Um, if you didn't catch that, that's okay. Uh, a combination that you can never go wrong with is green recharge plus anything else that seems good, like speed. Uh, so that's what I would recommend if you have a generic build in mind. As for perks, this Cordons will let you know where multiple survivors are. You have a smaller terror radius than usual, so that will mean that two or three or more survivors will be inconvenienced and maybe ambushed. That's great. If you down around them, Jolt will hurt them. You could also run any other slowdown perk here, and that would be fine. And Sloppy is a nasty, nasty perk on the spirit. Any person that is injured is typically very easy to track and much harder for them to get away with. And it is a bad idea for them to stay injured. This is a killer that if you're playing well, survivors want to heal again, so Sloppy is a bit of a no-brainer. Uh, no Way Out is my personal uh, choice for the endgame to help you out, but far from the only option. 
Let's have a, some, let's have a look at some alternative uh, ideas. No Way Out, of course, is the perk that blocks the exit gates for up to a minute, depending on how well you've done. Even if it's not a minute, it's still really, really good. Uh, next up, uh, the Spirit has an amazing ability to use Starstruck. Uh, agitation will allow you to carry faster and have a bigger terror radius that's closer to normal um, to hit people with Starstruck. And then you can also use that speed to make it to a pain rest, which can trigger Deadman Switch. Another idea is Awakened Awareness or mind, mind Breaker to make it a little bit harder for survivors to know what you're doing. You can pair this with standard add-ons or even throw in the Furin, which since it makes a, a, a map-wide sound, it will trigger survivors into thinking that you're coming for them. And if they let go of the gen for even a second, that man switch will trigger. So this is a nice combo. Uh, next up, uh, another thing that works extremely well on, on Spirit and might be a great choice if you're... Oh, sorry, I'm so sorry. She looks so ugly with low graphics. Let's do medium, shall we? Does that hair look a bit better? Yeah, sorry, I couldn't stare at that. Uh, another uh, another build that would work well and might give you an even better edge if you're struggling with the previous ones is using Blood Favor. Blood Favor is a nasty perk on the spirit because you are so quick after certain hits that if survivors do not have the ability to pre-drop very good pallets, they become extremely vulnerable. So we're gonna have Blood Favor, Undying, and if they ever manage to do the totems, Pentimental to punish them further. And in the background, we have Deadlock to slow on gens passively while we do our thing. So the idea here is that if they give you one hit, they probably will give you the second one and the counterplay becomes even harder. In a build like this that's so aggressive, activation uh, charge, you know, charge faster charging add-ons, uh, aka activation add-ons are definitely good. And you could use them both or pair them with recharge, which would also be really, really, really good. Uh, heck, even the new Cherry Blossom is really good for this stuff because if you run towards a survivor that's running away from you, you will heal the heartbeat immediately and you can immediately let go and hit and it's a really good combo as well. Next up, we have Legion. Now, Legion, because of the way their power at add-ons interact, has a ton of very viable ideas. Some of them very standard, some of them a bit more wacky. But the add-on and build that I'm going to recommend first is the most simple one that even, uh, even a beginner player could easily uh, follow and understand. And, and I really don't think it gets any better than this when it comes to ease to use and effectiveness. So, uh, add-ons to use always that are always good you can never go wrong with the mischief list do not be deceived by the fact that it's a brown armor. it's an incredible choice it extends the area that you can cover so much it makes multiple hits much more doable with a bit of experience this add-on is great uh keep in mind that sometimes if survivors are way too far from each other even this add-on won't save you so if you and you need to cancel power if you are not very experienced at judging when to use your power, you can use the Scratch Ruler, which saves you a lot of time getting it back so that you can keep people injured. Once you're already a little bit more experienced, then something like the Friendship Bracelet becomes really powerful, and the Filthy Blade adds a lot of time at the end of the game that survivors have to mend the mend the mend. Now for the perks, we have Jolt. Every time we down a survivor, gens nearby um, get affected and lose progress. Because everyone wants to stay injured against Legion, this makes it uh, particularly hard to avoid Jolt. It's not like they can be healthy on a gen, and then they take a hit and then they go away. Every time they take a hit close to a gen, which will be almost always, Jolt is going to hurt them. If they heal, good for you. You're going to use your power and injure them again and back to the beginning. Anytime they are busy mending, Ruin is going to sap and sap away progress from gens. It stacks really nicely with Jolt and it also works with Pain Resonance. Every time you hook a soul for the first time, minus 25 on a gen and bang. Now, the nice thing is that this perk and this perk and this perk, all of these perks makes gens go away, go regressing, right? And when this happens, surveillance will simply tell you that the gen is white and when someone gets back to it it's yellow so with this build you just basically follow white and yellow white and yellow white and yellow bang and you eventually find get get people injured eventually they'll make enough mistakes um while you patrol between the gens and give you downs and the the the, the, the build feeds itself now, uh, another build that is extremely easy to use, but is more oriented towards chase, is the following one. We have Deadlock to block gens oh, passively without us doing much. No way out to block the gates at the end and get a bigger chance to make a comeback if we haven't won by then. And then lethal to see everyone at the beginning and know exactly where to go. We don't necessarily want to go for the closest person. We want to go 
for the grouped people. And if a survivor is running away from an enclosed area, we go for that survivor first, and then we try to corral the other ones. We try to we try to think of which order of the survivors we want to go to so that they have the hardest time escaping multiple hits. If they're a bit stupid or uncoordinated, they might even give you four hits, and then the fifth one, bang, insta down. So that's nice. And then we have Enduring, which is a really nice perk on Legion. Lots of people try to mess up uh, around pallets. You hit them with your power, they stun you, and then you can instantly grab them. But guess what? If they pre-drop the pallet, if they don't pre-drop the pallet and try to play around it, Enduring is great. But if they pre-drop the pallet, you can vault it with Iridescent Button and destroy it immediately. So that's a really silly combo, but it works really well. And if they stun you with the Julius mixtape, you get your power back. So basically, at the start of the game, you can use your power and a swabber's on a pallet, and you can go right through it and stab them. If they stun you, if they don't stun you, there's a chance they might mess up and die. If they stun you, you use your power again. So this combination with this and this, these three things together make a really simple build that almost any you know beginner can use effectively. And heck, even if you're not a beginner, if you have a simple build, you can use the rest of your memory of your brain RAM into you know playing the rest of the game properly. Another idea on Legion that works really well, uh, same as we use on Myers, Discord and split with your food. Find multiple survivors, which is always good on Legion. And once you've already uh, hit some of them, you're eventually going to find the Obsession. Once you find the Obsession, now things get interesting. You injure them, you cancel, and you get one or two stacks on Blow with your food, whatever you see fit. And now everyone or most people are injured, and you are a killer that is way faster than normal. You are absolutely going to mess with them. More so if you bring the combination of stylish sunglasses and edge ruler. This will make them oblivious, which doesn't help with your power, but it's okay. And this makes them um, uh, makes their aura visible to you if they mend. So basically, this turns you into a somewhat stealth killer that can also power through chases because you're just so fast. And on top of that, you have Eruption and Pop Goes the Weasel. While you're getting stacks, you're also kicking gens and getting lots of regression whenever a down happens, which is pretty damn huge. But don't be don't be limited by these three suggestions. There are a lot of more interesting and, and gimmicky builds that you can try on Legion, so get creative. Next up is the Plague. Um, one of my favorite killers, as you can see by the Prestige. And this build that I recommend at the start is just so stupidly reliable, so stupidly simple. You cannot go wrong with it. If you want a very, very simple approach to playing Plague with almost any build, really, uh, in terms of add-ons, this, this is for you. So we have Discordance and Tinkerer together. It might seem a bit silly to have two Gen Info perks together, but trust me, this makes sense, especially on the Plague. This is the Divide and Conquer. The idea with the squadrons and Tinkerer is that if a survivor if a survivor is on their own on a gen with Tinkerer, you have a lot of time to stop them. And if two survivors are on a gen together, you don't let that happen. You go there and you puke on the gen, or if you have your power, God forbid, you go and destroy them. So you will constantly be puking on gens that survivors are working together, and that will force them to split. And when they split, you'll have Tinkerer. If multiple Tinkerers happen, guess what? They'll never pop at the same time because you have Deadlock. This becomes extremely, and I mean extremely dirty, if you pair Tinker or Deadlock with the Iridescent Seal. But don't do that. That's evil. If you do that, don't tell anyone I told you to do that, because I didn't. It would be unfortunate. So, yeah, that would mean that every time a gen is about to be done, you can stop it. And if multiple gens get done, you they can never be they can never be done at the same time. And you get multiple chances to use Iridescent Seal, which is an incredibly busted add-on. Uh, anyway, uh, back to the original plan. So what's the idea? Yes, with Discordance and Tinkerer, you have so much information. You know when to commit, you know when to puke on gens, you know when to pick up your fountains. With this apple, you'll have two of them. And it's just so much info that benefits play greatly. Uh, Deadlock on its own is great and works particularly well with Tinkerer. And since Tinkerer will let you know when the last gen is about to be done, you can put a lot of pressure on survivors and make sure that they don't go for gates early. One of the things that survivors do in the endgame uh, against killers is typically to tap the gates as soon as possible. But against Plague, they're often uh, a bit busy and they try to cleanse and do stuff and they don't always touch the gates immediately. Which means that No Way Out is even more useful on her than on your average killer. Very simple build, you can't go wrong with this. Although it is a pretty standard build, there's nothing all that unique. Let's go for some alternatives. Uh, Pain Rest, incredibly good on her. Floods of Rage, incredibly good on her. You can, when you expect a, an unhook to happen, you can go towards one of your fountains, even if it's really far away. And when the unhook happens, now you will know where everybody is and you can do 
massive destruction with your Red Fountain. This will be further enhanced by Lethal Pursuer. Do I need to explain that Lethal Pursuer is a very good thing on Plague? It's a very good thing on Plague. If you manage to puke on a gen or puke on a person and then immediately go for other people and spread your pressure, that's great. The last thing you want to do as Plague, the last thing you want to do as Plague is commit to one person and puke on them and fail and puke on them and try to fuel you puke, puke on them and then fail and then it takes you three minutes to get it down and three gems get done. You puke on them a little bit, hit them and then puke on them or hit them and just move on. Just just move on. Get two or three people injured uh, or infected and inconvenience them and then you can commit to someone and down the line, maybe they'll pop gents, but they'll all be in a bad spot. So, yeah. Uh, Terminus, by the way, is not the best perk in the world or anything, but it is one of... She is perhaps the only killer that can use this perk very reliably. If survivors are infected, they are broken, and when they cleanse, they might not realize that you have Terminus. And that means that they will cleanse, but they won't heal, which is a waste of your time. So, Terminus is a nice perk on Plague, because in the end game she can use it quite well. Uh, but here, other perks like Fearmonger perhaps could be even more um, appealing because it would make Pain Dress so much harder to deal with. So you have plenty of options here. I'm also a big fan of Hexes on uh, on the Plague. Ruin works really well. The new buff crowd control is insane on her. If you chase with this, survivors literally have no option. Blood Favor is also really nasty. If you hit a survivor they don't really get to use pallets on you, which is nice, because if you have your power and you get stunned by a pallet, that's bad, but if the pallet gets blocked, they can drop it on you, and guess what? Blood Favor can trigger telepathically from a distance. So if you puke on Meg, and then you chase Dwight, and Meg gets passively injured, the the pallets around Dwight will be... Um, hold up. Oh yeah, no, that's uh, uh, assuming, uh, assuming, assuming, of course, that they don't split up too much. I forgot. This is around the survivor that gets infected. But yeah, my point is, sometimes survivors will sandbag each other. If they get infected at the wrong time, they could block pallets for other people, which is pretty huge. Uh, same with crowd control. You you can sometimes see survivors try to leave through the same window. One of them gets stuck, and if they get stuck, you can sometimes fully infect them with your power. Anytime they do any of these totems, you can then. Re, uh, relight them with Pentimento, and they will also trigger Retribution, which will show you where everybody is. Knowing where everybody is on the plate is insanely powerful uh, for obvious reasons, because you can get your red power and then destroy them. And if you relight a totem with Pentimento, that's massive slowdown, and then you can puke on it, and if they try to do it, it's hopeless. It's really, really, really bad. You can trigger this, uh, you can run something like this with Severed Toe or the Brown Prayer Tablet, and what's gonna happen is survivors, by the time they do one totem, they'll be fully infected. So it's, it becomes really, really risky. Uh, many other alternative builds for Plague, I bet, but these are some of the ideas I would suggest. Next up, Ghost Face. Very simple killer and very popular uh, among... Um, among the average DVD players, from what I've heard, you can also go equally simple uh, with add-ons. His brown add-on to have faster marking is incredibly good. His brown add-on to have a shorter recovery time, you can't go wrong with it generally, even though they buff his recovery time. So these are two add-ons that could be your go-to if you don't want to get complicated. With lethal, you'll see people at the start be able to figure out which people are running. Maybe they've wasted spring burst, which people are walking. If they're walking, maybe they have spring burst or they're too scared to try to figure it out. Uh, and pick a target to either get a hit on or better yet, 99 them and down them now or later. If you manage to do this to multiple people, that can be the game over right there and then. So lethal is an incredibly good perk on him. Barbecue and chili is also really good and gets better thanks to lethal. Every time you hook, you can see people doing gens or healing in a corner. And if you have sloppy, which I recommend, the healing part will take longer so you have more of a chance to interrupt it. Uh, or even if you don't interrupt it, you can just 99 their stock so that by the time they're finished healing, it was all for basically nothing. Um, keep in mind that something like Tinker or Barbecue to keep an eye on gents goes really well with the purple add-on, the driver's license to block it. But we'll talk about that later. And then you can have No Way Out as an endgame insur insurance to help you last uh, a little bit longer and seal the deal. But many options here would be perfectly viable. Another idea here is to lean a bit more heavily on the gen defense. We have two perks like Corrupt and Deadlock to passively defend gens. And anytime a gen is about to be done, Tinkerer will let you know. A bit overkill on a stealth killer, sure, but it does make sense with the driver's license because if you mark people on that gen, guess what's going to happen? That's right, the gen explodes and gets blocked, which is a pretty big deal. And then, again, simple, no way out or know it or some other in-game perk uh, of your choice. 
If you want to go a bit more of the harassment, hit and run style, this build might be for you. We have Ruin and Painters, uh, both of which make gens go, uh, go down and regress. This will trigger surveillance, which will let you know when a gen is being touched. You can also get closer and listen to the, 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 the gen noises will be more clear with surveillance, so you can immediately tell that someone's there and set up an ambush or, that, or the opposite, that no one's there. Uh, and the idea here is that because survivors will be less likely to want to leave their gen with Ruin, you are more likely to mess with them. And also the perk Face the Darkness will reveal them occasionally if, if you keep people injured and it gets pretty nasty. Anytime you break a pallet, you can also get your power back thanks to Olsen's wallet. Uh, but the add-ons here, you know, you can go with plenty of choices. Uh, honestly, get creative with, uh, with Ghost Fist. It's got quite a few things you can do, uh, but these are some of the ones I suggest. Uh, next up, Demogorgon. All right, you cannot go wrong with the most mean regression perks in the game. Corrupt uh, is particularly good on him, not just the slowdown, but also the fact that... I just realized we don't have a red background. Huh. Isn't that a little bit prettier? Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, with Corrupt Intervention, you will be able to bother the survivors to actually move and waste a bit of time at the start. And this can let you set up maybe one or two portals early on before you go into a fight. Um, just to have them as a backup plan later. It's good to have at least one or two portals on each end of the map so that you can do a massive teleport from one end to another uh, after you hit them with pain dress, which will be on the first hook on each survivor, or to deliver a pop goes a weasel. Uh, notice, uh, and then you have bamboozle to maybe try to um, play outplay strong windows. And if it's pallets, guess what? You're a very good pallet shredder, even better with barbs glasses, which makes you recover faster after breaking a pallet. So this would be a pretty balanced uh, build. The one weakness of this build would be information. You don't see where they are at the start. You don't know which gens are being done. But if you are ready to run something like Lepros Licken, which is easily his best add-on, this shows you where every single swabber is, so the information comes from here. You could also just trust your own instinct or even run 11 Soda instead, which would allow you to also see which gens are being done, which would be a decent alternative um you could also if you don't think bamboozle is all that good you could also run tinkerer or barbecue which would uh, uh which would also fill that gap of information sorry don't know why i have this uh another idea for him is to go a bit crazier on the passive slowdown so corrupt deadlock and no way out for the end game these are all perks that slow down the game at the start in the middle at the end while you don't really do much and you can focus entirely on using your power. With Barb's Glasses and Black Heart, you have shorter cooldowns on hitting pallets, walls, and people. And uh, with the buff Coup de Grass, you now have a really nice plan B for loops that are difficult to shred. So in a place like Shag or Long Tiles, where your shred is incredible, you use that, and it's really, really good. But in other loops, where maybe the survivors are... Um, running around some small rock that is really round. You can use your power there. That's where Coup de Grass is going to save your butt. Because every time they finish a gen, um, you know, Deadlock will trigger. You're not gonna, you're not gonna have multiple gens popping too quickly. And you have two tokens to do super long lunges that basically make the devil an all-terrain chase god, if you will. Uh, next up, uh, needs to be mentioned, uh, the demo is incredibly good at defending hexes, particularly the Vower Hope, especially with the life work, uh, with the lifeguard whistle. You have a portal that you place next to a totem. You will have two totems with this. Either of them is fine. If you defend Undying, it doesn't matter because if it gets done, um, if if it gets done, you can defend Devour. And if you defend Devour and Undying gets done, like, it, 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 and if Devour get, <laughs> the, My point is... I'm sorry, I don't know why this is so complicated. But my point is, if you have two totems and you have Undying, either of them will be Devour Hope at the end. So you defend one or two of those totems and they will need to do both of them and you will not let them because every time they get close to an active portal, this add-on will warn you. Just straight up, it will just warn you. And with this, they'll take even longer to get rid of it. You could also pair it with the Thorny Binds, which will give you an extra meter, which this add-on took away. And, um, and ma basically make it so that you get a really early warning when someone's trying to cleanse you and devour. In the meantime, if they do gens, great. You have discordance to find them and cripple them. You could also bring other information perks, which would be fine. And if they do somehow manage to do the totems, guess what? You relight them with Pentimento, and now good luck dealing with 30% slower gens. So, uh, no, sorry, no. Legion. Um, Demogorgon is very good at dealing with this kind of uh, builds. Now, some of you, I'm sure, might have noticed a concerning lack of save the best for last. 
This is a perk that is really popular in demo, and I've recommended before. Is this a bad perk on demo? It's actually not. It's a really good perk on demo. Uh, if you find the obsession, you hit them with your shred. If you find anyone else and they're in the open, you hit them with uh, with this, and then you'll recover fast, and you can maybe finish the job with a norm with a regular shred. So that's really really powerful. Um, and there's a little trick to hit your shred from up close. If you have the obsession next to you and you want to hit a shred, just pretend in your head that you're ca you, you hold your power and pretend in your head that you're carrying a survivor. You know when you carry a survivor and you do a normal attack and it doesn't have a launch? You have the timing for that in your head. So if you pretend that that's what you're doing, you will hit your shreds from up close 100% of the time. It's a really nice mental trick to, to not overthink it. Um, so yeah, Sethra's Flask can be good. However, there's a little problem. If you go against survivors that are extremely solid, they will make each hit very difficult. You will not get easy at once. And by the time you have say the best for us at two or three stacks, you will have done you the, the game will be over. They will force you to use your shred. And for that reason, say the best for us can be a bit of a noob trap where you play really well against teams that are weaker and you stop using your shred, so you do not practice the real power of Demon Gorgon, which is your shred. And then when you go against a team that's a bit more challenging, it could bite you in the butt. So use it at your own risk. But, you know, that being said, it's still a solid perk. Next up, Oni. Now, Oni, uh, you will notice, has the exact same build as I recommended for the Plague, and it's for the exact same reason. Look at him. So cool. Um, with Discordance and Tinkerer, you have the Divide and Conquer strategies. Survivors that are close together, you go there, you're guaranteed to find two or three survivors. Some of them might be out of place. Maybe one of them has Spimbers, maybe one of them is a bit stupid and they hide behind the gen. If they hide behind the gen, they think that you don't know that you're there, they're, they're, they're there, but you know because they score them, so you can get a free hit. With Tinkerer, it's a similar idea. Once you force survivors to split out on gens, now they'll give you a lot of time to get close. If you don't have your power, you can sneak up to them, try to go for a grab, try to go for a hit. Uh, luckily, even if multiple Tinkerers proc, thanks to Deadlock, you're never gonna lose multiple gems at once. But the really nice part about these, um, about these two perks is how they help you use your power. If you have your power up and you just down someone, and, and Discordance goes up, then that is 100% a warning that, hey, there's two people here, you should use your power right away, go here right away, you're guaranteed to find people. And with Tinkerer, it's so difficult for them to know uh, where you're approaching from. So this basically is a an overload of information to let you know when to use your power. And on top of that, we have no way out so that they know they have zero chance to quickly get an escape at the end. Um, and yeah, you know where the last gen is going to be done with Tinkerer. You're going to pressure the heck out of it. It's going to be very difficult for them to finish the gen and open the gates quickly. With no way out, you're guaranteed to get a bit of damage. What add-ons should you go for if you don't know what you're doing? Duration add-ons can never, ever, ever be bad. Even if you don't use the full duration, you still benefit from them for reasons that are complex to explain. And extra blood add-ons are also really, really good. It will make survivors drop them more frequently, get you more of your power more frequently. So you can't go wrong with this too. Uh, a more advanced build that we could go for that would still be really, really good. Um, Lethal Pursuer is an amazing perk on him. Being able to figure out which of the survivors is in the worst spot and which one is the most vulnerable to get a free hit of them is super useful. No need to explain why. Uh, once you're going to get that first down, you can have Pain Rest and Deadman Switch trigger at the same time and block gens and give you a lot of information of where to go. Floods of Rage is really, really nice. Uh, when the unhook happens, you'll see where everybody is. Good time to use your power. You could alternatively also use uh, Fearmonger so that survivors that are working on gens don't know when the pain dress is going to hit them and have a less awareness of their teammates to help them out, which is good. Uh, barbecue and Chili, uh, Death Mountain even. Uh, any perk to find out where survivors have been healing is not a terrible idea. And Barbecue, for example, would get boosted by Lethal Pursuer. So consider that. Again, duration add-ons are always good. Uh, the Ink Lion to turn on your power a bit sooner is also not a bad idea for a yellow. Really, really good value. Uh, and you can go on even more classic build with something like this. With my Eternal Abuse, we have a smaller turret radius to catch the first survivors off guard, and a bigger turret radius in chase to make Infectious Fright even bigger. So the idea is that when you use your power and you down a survivor, you will have a 40 meter turret radius around you where anyone that's there will scream. If you, if you hear screams, you can go for them and keep the snowball going, which will be even more powerful with the with duration or speed add-ons. And if you don't hear any anyone and you don't want to get greedy, perfect. 
All you need to do is hook and you will trigger barbecue and chili to see people further than 40 meters. So people that are within 40 meters, infectious. People that are further than uh, 40, barbecue. And then you'll have Pop Goes the Weasel as well or Corrupt if you prefer a more passive idea to slow down the game. Anytime you hook with Pop, you can kick a gen and remove a lot of progress and Corrupt is a bit more of a help in the early game instead. Um, other ideas that are worth considering for um, for this killer, uh, play with your food. If you are frustrated by your inability to get hits early on on Survivor's Play, it's really, really safe. Uh, play with your food can be an excellent choice um, to on and off gain stacks on the obsessions and become faster and make that first hit so much harder to avoid. And that's, I know, a pick uh, that some top tier Onis uh, like to bring on their public matches. But other than that, hopefully this build will carry you to victory. Next up, the Deathslinger. Now, the Deathslinger has certain add-ons that are extremely good and can modify the kind of uh, the, the kind of perks that you bring. So, for example, right here, I have the very standard reload add-on, which is super good. You should always bring this pretty much. And a really also useful uh, add-on to remove cooldown from missed attacks. If I miss my shot, I can get back to action, have a second sooner with this add-on. This is good for beginners. But let's say that you want to go a bit more meta and you bring the iridescent coin. This is an add-on that insta down survivors that you shoot from afar. If I have an insta down, then maybe I don't need Save the Best for Last. So in this build, for example, I would remove Save the Best for Last for something else um, instead of this. Something mean, something that would be uh, difficult, like maybe sloppy or whatever. Uh, monitoring abuse to sneak up on them. Anything other than, you know, make sure that an Insta Down and an Lethality Perk do not conflict. But assuming that we don't bring this, let's say we bring something a bit more uh, regular like this. Uh, yeah, this is, a, this is a perfectly good build. We have Corrupt Intervention to help us buy time at the start. Jolt is a good perk on him, more so than on other killers, because if you shoot a survivor and you're far away from a gen, sometimes you can reel them close to the gen, and then by the time you down them, Jolt will hit that gen. And Save the Best for Last is a really solid perk on this killer. Uh, when he has enough stacks, he can hit a survivor, and then before they make much distance, immediately shoot them and, and make a 1-2 combo that's very, very hard. To avoid. If the obsession is the one you're shooting, you can try to break your chain instead of hitting them to save some stacks. And No Way Out, I think it goes, it just goes well with almost anything, but here you can bring no one escapes death, you could have whatever else you want. Your This build would be pretty solid. Uh, pain res as well, goes without saying. Uh, this idea is a little bit more creative. Again, we have the um, the reload add-on, this time with an add-on to inflict mango to make healing a little bit less desirable. We want them to stay injured to make every down a potential every shot a potential down. And we have the combination of Painress and Jolt or Painress and Deadman Switch which would also be really, really good here. And the idea is that we're bringing that with Agitation. With Agitation, we will carry the survivors faster, which will make it easier to reach uh, a pain rest and faster. And we also have a massive terror radius of, what is it, 44 meters. Everyone in that terror radius gets hit by Starstruck, which means that our next shot could be a, an insta down. Very, very strong idea on him. If you wanna make sure that you find people when you pick up, you could also bring Thrilling Tremors. And it's very, very simple stuff. Uh, when you pick up, you go, you walk towards the gems that are not blocked by Thrilling Tremors, and you're guaranteed to find people. This is probably one of my favorite builds. Another idea that you can do is Hexes. This guy is really, really good at interrupting people from a distance, and he can make the Insta Down from Devour a big deal. So we have Devour uh, Hope, which will make the third, uh, the third hook. Uh, after the third hook, survivors will have to deal with you exposing them and Insta Downing them, which is horrible. And then you have Protection in Undying, which will make the first uh, Totem Cleanse basically useless. Thrill the Hunt, which will make Totems uh, uh, cleansing much slower at the beginning. And Pentimento, once they cleanse those Totems, you will be able to relight them. Relighting them reactivates some of the strength of Thrill the Hunt. So if we're at five totems and they cleanse a totem and then I relight them, we're back to five. So the totems will be slow. If you're on top of totems with this build and you get downs early on, the middle game and late game becomes very, very grim for survivors and they need to waste a lot of time on totems. Uh, again, we bring the reload add-on and this time the cigar. The cigar is maybe his best add-on, especially combined with the reload. Uh, you can shoot a survivor 
break the chain against some obstacle and you recover so fast. It's like having saved the best for last, but on steroids. And then you can get that first down quickly and keep the pressure from the hexes piling up. Um, I've also made some other builds on Slinger that are fun and somewhat... Um, and somewhat viable, but these are the ones I would recommend if you're looking for some of the strongest ones available. Next up, Pyramid Head. Pyramid Head has the notorious ability to ignore hook-related perks by caging survivors, but that also means that he cannot use all of the hook perks very well himself. Uh, Corrupt Intervention or Lethal Pursuer is a great uh, is a great boon on him to let him find people early and not lose gems at the start. Keep in mind he's not a particularly mobile or or stealthy killer to sneak up to people. And then you can play around the idea of with uh, of using nowhere to hide on eruption. Anytime you're contesting gens, you kick them. If anyone is around them, you will see them. Maybe you can even shoot them through walls with this. Watch out, survivors. And when you get other downs, eruption will trigger on those gens. So you can defend gens very effectively with this. Uh, just don't go crazy and, and make sure you play a solid um, a solid pyramid head. Don't don't go. You you don't want to get. Uh, you don't want to kick two gens and then start using your punishment randomly and, and missing 50-50s. You want to play solid with this and it will really, really help you out. Uh, near the end of the game, we'll have No Way Out, which is really, really powerful. Um, the thing is, No Way Out triggers and gets more powerful whenever you hook people. It's true that this killer cages, but you don't always cage three times. Most of the times, you're going to down a survivor, cage them, hook them, cage them, or cage them, cage them, hook them, or hook them, hook them cage them, aka chop them. So No Way Out is almost guaranteed at some point to get value and it's gonna make the endgame really, really scary. If you don't know what to do with add-ons, add-ons to increase your range are always good. Add-ons to increase the maximum duration of your power, believe it or not, are good. And you also can go wrong with add-ons that increase the time your trails stay on the ground. Anything else, I'd say, unless you really know what you're doing, maybe avoid it because the add-ons are not that great. Uh, another idea is to go with a similar style of build as what we explained for Plague and, um, and Oni. You will have the, uh, the Discordance and Tinkerer combo. With Discordance, you're likely to find groups of people, sometimes even Discordance and Tinkerer together, will let you use your punishment with extra range add-ons to hit two people on a gen, which is crazy. This works to this day very effectively. And we have the combination again of Tinker and Deadlock, so that if multiple so multiple gens are being at the same time, you will get, you will never lose them both, and you'll get a warning. Uh, Tinker uh, will also let you know when the last gen is about to be done, obviously, and that gives you a really good chance to use Noid, which is a really fearsome perk on him. Uh, do be careful though. The only thing you'd want to avoid in the end game is to down a Subaru and then cage them and send them to the other side of the map with the get. Exit uh, with the exit gate open next to them. Uh, as long as you avoid that blunder, which is a classic, uh, this is a really, really strong build that gives you tons of information so that you know when it's best to cage, when it's best to hook, and when the game is going on, on your pace and when it's not. Another idea that I also value on this killer for similar reasons as play is Hexes. Lethal obviously is good and will make Retribution even stronger. Retribution is a trap perk that will make every totem that they cleanse until it's gone show the auras of every survivor now this is good like you can look around and see every survivor and that information is good but the crazy part is that it helps a lot in chase so if you see a survivor and they trigger retribution you can snipe them through walls and it's super super effective ruin is not the strongest regression perk in the game but with this killer it really kicks ass because you can force survivors out of places and you can put trails and you can slow them down and you can do a lot of things to make ruin really really nasty guess what we're going to be bringing a range add-on because it's so good, but we're also going to be bringing uh, the type of add-ons that increase the duration of our trails. If we walk by a totem, we can very quickly do a little a little drawing in front of it, of our trails, and they will last in there for like 90 seconds. That's a very long time. Uh, more so if you keep resetting it. And that means that if a survivor goes to the totem and starts working on it, even if they're crouching, they will get tormented. So this forces survivors to deal with this really strong perks, uh, the hexes, including blood favor, which will block the pallets once you get a hit, uh, which is really, really nasty. It, they will be forced to deal with this or be tormented. And if you if they get tormented for free, well, you know what happens. You can begin to cage them and gain momentum and chop chop. So yeah, these are some of the builds I'd recommend. Next up, we have the Blight. Jesus, what a monster. Uh, the Blight is a bit like the Nurse. He is so unbelievably strong 
that almost any good perk you give him will make him shine and he can play with no perks, he can play with basic perks, he can do almost anything just by virtue of how strong he is. Similar to Nurse, he's at, his special attack does not trigger basic perks, so perks like Noid, Sloppy, Jolt are not a good choice on him, generally speaking. So your bread and butter for Blight is information and slowdown. With information, you know where swabbers are and you're so fast that you are just gonna be there within seconds and with slow down you make you you know you, you make any you make any downturn into less time um uh less time gain on gens or or regression on gens from pop and pain rest. It, it gets really really dirty you have time to shred through the survivors if you don't want to overthink your build lethal pursuer for the start Barbecue and chili every time you hook, which gets improved by Lethal Pursuer, and then pop and pain rest. Basically, every time you get a down, which will be often, you get minus 25 and a potential minus 30-ish every single time you down. And that's going to be, as we mentioned, really, really fast. And then you can run speed increasing add-ons, which are some of the most popular. You can double up on speed, which is popular. You can get speed and alchemist ring, so that when you down an M2, when you hit an M2, you can immediately do another rush. And this build would be already disgusting. You can alter it to your liking, and it's it's awful. It's it's disgustingly powerful. If you want to go a more um, secure uh, passive route. You have corrupt deadlock to block gens passively, tinkerer to know when a gen is about to get done, use your speed to get there, and a little bit of no way out to be able to seal the deal in the end game. If you want to play with your brain turned off, you could do something like this. Simply go for downs, travel around the map at the start until you find someone. Anytime Tinker gets triggered, you go and bother them. Multiple Tinkers get triggered, no problem. Deadlock's gonna stop at least one of them. So yeah, very, very simple stuff. Um, alternatively, if you want to be um, a different kind of lazy, you could run Ruin and Pain Rest to regress gens, uh, Fear Monger to make it even harder to know when Pain Rest is going to happen, or Deadman Switch, which would also work out pretty well. And essentially, anytime you uh, survive or let's go of a gen or you hit Pain Rest, Surveillance here will trigger and will let you know that that gen has changed color and you can go there and bother it. Again, you could use Speed Add-ons or even the Camp on 33, which would give you a massive help in chase. And you will have info on the gens, help in chase, what else could you possibly want? The truth is, Blight is so strong, you probably don't even need anything close to this to do really, really well. When you're learning him, though, you might benefit from using one of these builds. Next up, the twins. Um, the twins need to build up pressure to um, to get their, their ball rolling. And sometimes that will come from you slowing down the gens and using Victor to injure everyone one by one. Or getting a little bit lucky and getting some hits with Charlotte. And once everyone is injured, her, their power really, really shines. If you don't know what to run in terms of add-ons, you can almost never go wrong with either purple speed or green speed and the toy sword. The toy sword allows Victor to prepare his his shred of swords a little bit faster. And for a brown add-on, it is very, very crucial. It is very, very good. Uh, other add-ons that are easy for beginners to run could be the stale biscuit and uh, ceremonial candelabrum. These add-ons together make it a little bit harder to kick Victor. So if you find yourself missing your pounces a lot, these add-ons will help you recover a bit and even punish survivors that get a bit greedy and try to kick you. So if you're a beginner, these two add-ons could also help out. So since Victor cannot use perks like Jolt and Charlotte is not a super high mobility killer like we just talked about and she cannot go around kicking gems with pop, you really do benefit from perks that do the job for you passively. Corrupt Intervention is among the best of them. Deadlock is also among the best of them. With these two perks, you block gems without doing really anything. And since you'll be getting hooks, No Way Out is also a pretty nice perk to have in the end game very reliable uh, ability to slow down the exit gates and get an extra kill maybe set up um a final uh, a final struggle to get an extra kill even if the match didn't go super well now our other third perk is there to help us out to build pressure and you have a few options uh coup de gras is their own perk and got recently buffed every time they do a gen you will get two tokens thanks to deadlock. They're not gonna do three gens at once, so that's nice. You will be spaced out. And the nice thing about Coup de Grass, it doesn't work with Victor, but it is really good on Charlotte to get hits that you normally wouldn't. If a survivor is trying to loop really tight uh, and and play very optimally, and they don't somehow know that you have Coup de Grass, you could get a nasty injury to either injure them and then send out Victor and eliminate them, or 
down them in the first place if your victor is on cooldown or if your victor is on another survivor. So basically, coup de gras is like a little enhancement for Charlotte so that she can do more while victor is busy or on cooldown. So that could really, really, really work. Another idea um, that is popular on them is Force Pennant. Well, let me talk first about Force Hesitation. Force Hesitation is really fun and probably goes well with these two add-ons. If you down a survivor and another survivor is nearby, they will become so slowed down that you will actually be able to run away with Victor before they can kick you, which is kind of funny, but a bit situational. Uh, the nice thing about Force Pennants, however, is that it is a massive punish to any survivor group that is trying to uh, protect each other. So if survivors uh, against twins split up, that's good. That means that one by one, you'll be able to take them off. If they get together, though, that can be really bad. Because sometimes uh, a healthy survivor can take a hit and then um, no one goes down. Or an injured survivor can take a hit, go down, and then the other one kicks you. And then they heal on the ground or use for the people, or whatever. Or we're going to live forever. There's so many things that can destroy you. But with Force Penance, anytime they're grouping up, if you hit a survivor that's protecting someone else, they become permanently, well, not permanently, uh, broken for a very long time. Almost permanently. 80 seconds is a long time. That's almost permanent. So with 80 seconds of not being able to heal, that gives you ample time to eventually build up pressure and get them all. So that's also an idea. Uh, barbecue and chili is also a nice choice. Uh, something to allow you um, to see where survivors are healing, how they're moving and send out Victor as a little scout uh, is never a bad thing. Next up, um, we have a different type of build. This is a similar idea, uh, showing some of the perks that we talked about before. But this time we use Pain Dress. Uh, keep in mind that you have an add-on called the Spring Top that allows you to make survivors drop their item. And you could you could uh, pair this with their own perk if you're short on perks, like Hoarder. Which will let you know when that item gets picked up with a really, really big range. So that's an idea as well. You can use Hoarder with any add-on that makes survivors drop items. Um, another idea that I would really like here is Lethal Pursuer, which seems a bit overkill, but thinking that you can send out Victor so quick and then split up with Charlotte, it's really not. Even with Corrupt, if you see two groups of survivors, you can send out Victor to one and then use Charlotte on the other. Um, and yeah, we've talked a little bit about the other perks. Next up, um, this could also be an interesting combination. Instead of Corrupt, we now use Discordance. The nice thing about Discordance is that you're guaranteed pretty much to find someone and you can get real close with Charlotte, send out Victor, hit one of them, and then try to see if you can fish out the person that runs out. Um, nice thing about Discordance as well is that Victor, he doesn't see the color, but he can hear it. So you can hear and, and notice Discordance going off even with Victor um, and see the little notification, uh, even though the gen doesn't change color, which is one of the only perks that Victor can actually use. Uh, Blood Favor is also really, really nice, um, and Crowd Control was recently buffed. This means that if survivors try to abuse a strong window, it gets blocked immediately. This means that if you hit someone with Victor and Charlotte is nearby, which will happen often thanks to the Scordons, you the, the survivor will, will, will be in a lose-lose situation. And then we have Undying to protect these hexes a little bit more. Uh, do not sleep on her iridescent add-on, the Silencing Cloth. Every time you transition back and forth to Charlotte, you will be undetectable, which goes really, really well with some of these strategies. And if you get to see some auto reading from Undying and so on, it can be really good. You could even you could even use Victor on a third person and go for the two people on Discordance with the stealth that you get from this. So yeah, those are some of the ideas for twins. But good luck, you're gonna you're gonna need it. These killers really depend more on using their power well than their perks, oftentimes. Next up, we have Trickster. Now, Trickster is an amazing defender of areas, an incredibly good uh, DPS. He can down people really, really quick, even groups with certain add-ons, especially with his main event. And he also makes some loops that are short very, very good. However, he struggles in map mobility because he's slow and needs to reload, and he's not particularly good at getting downs around tall obstacles like, say, Shaq. He's not very good at that. Um, if you struggle with Shaq, add-ons like the Cage Hard Shoes might help you to still keep up with survivors throwing knives little by little and not have to go around 20 million times. Um, if you struggle with mobility, uh, having extra knives, even the brown ones, is nice, especially if you keep your accuracy high. And then we're going to have some perks to help us do the job a little bit for us. Corrupt Intervention blocks the gens of the start, force people to run into you, always good. Pain Rest, if we hook a person, gen in the distance loses uh, progress without us having to do much. Great. Uh, agitation 
and or Deadman Switch and or Fearmonger would also do great. Agitation will let us reach the Pain Rush more consistently and make it to things like Basement, which are really, really scary against Trickster. And No Way Out can be a perk to buy us time in the endgame without having to necessarily go out of our way too much. This would be a very basic build that would work pretty well. Alternatively, you can get a little bit more aggressive and go with Pain Rest and Pop. Here you need to get a bit more involved in knowing where survivors are doing gens, but you might be able to pull it off thanks to Lethal Pursuer. Since you'll be able to see everyone at the start, you'll have a good idea of where they are, and when you chase one survivor, you'll have an idea of where the other ones are. Lethal will also increase the information that you get from Diamond Cufflinks, which is really, really nice. Uh, in this case, since we don't have these add-ons to help us uh, not slow down, we might struggle on places like Shack and main buildings. So Bamboozle can be really good to block a window uh, and not have to deal with Swabbers going around it a million times, which is really, really annoying. Uh, in these main buildings and so on, the Trick Blaze can be good as well. You don't use this add-on too much, you, you don't rely on it too much, but say you hit a survivor and they're injured and they need one more knife, you see their aura thanks to diamond cufflinks, very solid add-on, and then you know they're going around the corner, bang, you can use, you can hit them around the corner with this, or you can hit them when they're sitting on a pallet with this. So this is a bit more of a high level build, but it can really, really work, and I've seen people do wonders with things similar to this. Uh, next up, my personal favorite build on Trickster is Blood Favor Oriented. Trickster has no cooldown on his knives. He's not like a normal killer that hits you and then goes shh, shh. If you throw knives and you damage a survivor, yeah, they get a speed boost, but you do not slow down, which means that you are particularly good at keeping up with them and making sure that they don't get away and then you hit them with a normal attack or even more knives. With Blood Favor, they get really, really messed up. Uh, and of course, we're also relying on Undying to protect Blood Favor a bit longer. We're also bringing the Fist Spin Soda, which makes your throw rate of knives even more powerful when you begin to really go machine gun on them. And in this in this build, I also brought the, the Reload Speed add-on, which we're gonna be using with Darkness Reveal. You don't need this add-on, it's not that strong, but it fits the build okay. If you don't know what add-ons to bring on Trickster, uh, shoes are okay, extra knives are always okay. You don't need to get complicated, honestly. So what's the deal with Darkness Revealed? Every time we reload, we will see people around the map. This is good info, and sometimes this reveals people that are hiding next to you. Uh, same like Undying sometimes reveals autos of people that are hiding next to dual totems. This is really good because if you get close and you get that first damage, the second one oftentimes happens for free with Blood Favor. And then in the background, we have either No Way Out or Deadlock or some other perk. Maybe not Corrupt, because that would make the Hexes maybe a bit vulnerable if people start running around the map. And this them. We have some passive slowdown perk to help us out uh, with gems while we do our stuff. This is a really fun build that I highly recommend. Next up, we have Nemesis. Nemesis is a killer that is a bit of a slow cooker. Damn, he's got some aggressive music. Let's keep it. I'll just be louder. So, yeah, at the start, Nemesis starts out not being too super strong. He needs to get to tier 2 to really break pallets and be a menace. That's why, if you don't know what to run, if you want a somewhat reliable build, uh, plan 43 binds and damage syringe is a good slowdown option. These are add-ons that add 5 and 4 seconds every time a survivor uses a syringe. And if they do this 2 or 3 times, it obviously adds up. We have Corrupt to block the gens at the start and force survivors to come towards us and give us chances to hit, down, injure, infect one of them. Deadlock, good perk that will buy you time and will be very, very annoying to deal with. Uh, survivors will be waiting around the gen, they'll have more chances to attract zombies and so on. Tinkerer, you're a big killer that's really loud, you're not gonna be sneaking up to survivors to grab them most of the times, but it doesn't matter. The ability to know when a gen is about to get done and knowing that no no two gens are ever going to pop at the same time thanks to deadlock allows you to get to them and get an infection on them or get that first hit. And the biggest pain of Nemesis is that if survivors are in a good spot, they're going to run away. So that's, let's say, 20 seconds. Then you're going to hit them. That's another 20 seconds against the next one. Then you're going to infect them. That's another 20 seconds. It's going to be like a, like a three or four hit chase. And that is awful. With Tinker, you have the ability to sometimes mess with them and get that first hit or first infection relatively for free. And No Way Out is also obviously a solid perk for the endgame. You've had so many perks to buy you time. during. Uh, at that time, you'll already be tier 3. You'll be strong. Maybe a person that don't hook. Uh, maybe all the pallets gone or you're tier 3. So it doesn't matter if there's pallets. You're going to shred right through them. So obviously, it, it, it extends the game at the end when you are at your strongest. So this is a solid build all, all around. 
Next up, we can be a bit more reliant on our zombies. Instead of relying on passive slowdown from these two add-ons, we now put power on the zombies. With the admin wristband or the brown version of this, uh, the visitor pass, you make the zombies be able to detect survivors more uh, broadly around them. And then we make them faster with the ink ribbon. They will move significantly faster, also respawn a bit sooner, which is a good thing. Also, the gimmick that they spawn in the exit gates, I guess it's fun. Uh, on top of this, what's the deal? We are bringing Discordance. Discordance is a perk that lets you know where multiple survivors are. That's amazing, because if you find multiple survivors, you can uh, infect one of them, then go for the other, infect the other, and bam, you're out of the tier two. Also, it attracts zombies, which is super, super crucial. Because zombies will be constantly harassing people off gens, ruin is gonna be very annoying, believe it or not, and pain rest every now and then will give you a bit of um, regression when you get that hook, which is gonna help you to keep up. So ruin and pain rest will make gens go down. If they get rid of ruin, which they... If they don't, don't worry, you'll get value from it. If they do get rid of it, you can also, uh, you can also relight it with Pentimento to get a massive slow down that will make pain rest even stronger another idea with him is to rely entirely on 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 pain resonance and support it with three perks so here we're having the add-on to increase the infection that we get from survivors if we get survivors we'll hit them and get infection if we see a zombie we'll probably also try to kill it um, to get the undetectable, which again works a bit like Tinkerer. It lets you get close to survivors, maybe make the first hit a bit easier. And when we down a survivor, agitation will let us will let us uh, carry them to a gen that needs to be defended so that we can defend two things at once. It will let us carry them to pain rest faster. Um, it will also make it so that when we hit the pain rest, survivors um, are going to be blind. They won't know when to let go, so they might get hit by the pain rest and scream. And that will also trigger Deadman Switch. Guess what? Even if it doesn't, zombies naturally go around places and bother survivors of gens, and that also triggers Deadman Switch. So this is a build that's entirely relying on one perk, but it's such a good perk and it's so well supported that it should do quite a lot for you. Don't be afraid to try other things on Nemesis, but these are the builds that I think will consistently uh, carry you if you're a bit lost. Next up, the Sanobide. Now, um, lots of way to build around this character, especially if you have a deeper understanding of his high rarity add-ons, but I'm gonna give you a build that is simple, it's solid, and it's gonna let you learn a lot so that you can eventually, you know, adapt and change it to your own liking. Lethal Pursuer. Great add-on, shows you everyone at the start, uh, makes other auto-reading, including this one, uh, a little bit longer. But it's particularly good on Pinhead because it allows you to find the box. Now, I do believe I have a video that explains how to find the box, um, thanks to Lethal Pursuer. And the idea is that if you know where you spawn and where the survivors have spawned, this allows you to mathematically predict where the box will be. And if you pick it up at the start, that's a big deal. Even if you don't pick it up at the start, you can keep an eye on it and uh, chase people around it and then bother someone that picks it up, even if you only know its approximate location. So Lethal is good on this killer for multiple reasons. Uh, Sloppy Butcher is also amazing. Anytime survivors are under a chain hunt, healing will be nearly impossible. If someone is like halfway healed and then the chains begin to harass them, that healing is going away. A solid perk overall if you go out and get hits on multiple people. And then we have two perks to slow on the game in the form of Pain Rest and Deadman Switch. Deadman Switch obviously also gets triggered by chain hunts, so it's a really, really good perk, even if you don't get Pain Rest. Uh, also, alternatively, here you could have Jolt, which would also be a simple perk to run. So, a little bit of slowdown on the gens, a little bit of slow on the healing, and information all throughout. Uh, this add-on is cute, it gives you the ability to use your power more often, but there's a bunch of others that we'll talk about in a minute. And the Greasy Black Lens is my personal favorite. As long as survivors don't have Lethal Pursuer, and if they do, you'll know with Lethal Pursuer early on. Every time you chain them, you see their aura, and this helps in so many situations. It's really, really good. And you'll see their aura for 8 seconds, which is really, really huge. Really comfy add-on to bring. Uh, other ideas to go for here are the Hex-related ones. With Plaything, the middle game will become very confusing. Survivors won't know where you are. If they try to pick up the box, they might not realize that they're picking it up next to you. Ruin will be nasty anytime you mess with them. They won't be able to preemptively go and solve the box because you might be running the iridescent uh, box, which makes it hidden until the last second. And if they try to do it next to you, you might be able to interrupt it with a better chance to succeed because you're running Lavish Remains, one of his best add-ons to make the box take longer. If the box takes longer, your idea is not 
to just teleport is to actually go and either hit them if you're close enough or send the chain and hit them with the chain to interrupt them. And when that happens, you keep the cycle of pain going. And Sloppy feeds into that cycle and pain, uh, Pentimento, if they get rid of Ruin or some of the playthings, makes the game slow down to a crawl. So this is a very mean build if you can get the star right. Uh, another idea is to rely a little bit more on endgame perks. You have deadlock to slow on gens and give you a bit more of a chance to keep up. De uh, no way out to make the endgame last a lot longer than they'd like. And no way to straight up be a menace. And the thing about this build, obviously you also have barbecue so that every time you hook you see a little bit around yourself. Uh, simple impaling wire, which makes your chain overall just get a buff. Very simple add-on. And the original pain, which at least at the moment is an insanely strong and, in my opinion, disgusting add-on. So the idea with the original pain is that when you hook, uh, when, when a survivor is hit by a chain, if they break the chain with the environment or... Uh, if they break, like, if you run into it, if the chains break by any way, you basically, um, you basically hit them with Deep Wound. Now, this doesn't seem like a big deal, right? Uh, why is this such a big deal? Well, there's one way to use it that's pretty normal and what the developers probably intended, which is, like, if you have multiple people injured, you hit them with this, and then they have to, you know, reset their heals and it slows them down. But the real way to use this add-on, the real way to make it super disgusting, is to tunnel people. If you tunnel someone and you hit them with a the chain, and then you break the chain yourself or they break it themselves and then you hit them, if they have bar of time, off the record, uh, base kit endurance, uh, dead heart, it doesn't matter what they have, anything will be gone. If they get, if the deep wound happens, the next hit will down them 100%, no matter what, pretty much. So that means that you can hit a survivor off the hook with this, and no matter what perks they have, you're most likely gonna get, uh, you're most likely gonna be able to tunnel them. And that alone is really, really powerful and complements the rest of this very mean endgame build. Uh, that being said, this killer does have some fun ideas. One little bit of warning, though, I'm gonna write it down. Uh, there used to be a perk called Horder that was really good on him. I recommended this perk on the last best builds video because when Survivors picked up a box, you got notified and that was amazing. This perk no longer works like that. It's now a special item. So if you miss Horder from these builds and you remember, hey, didn't this perk used to be good? Yes, it used to, but no longer. So keep that in mind. <laughs> Let's move on. All right, sorry, uh, moving on, we arrive at the Artist. Uh, the Artist has an amazing ability to send birds from afar. You do not necessarily want to rely on this for downs, but she can definitely use this to harass gens. So we're gonna run Lethal Pursuer. Hi, Love, what is up? Oh, right, yeah, no, I think, I think we'll be fine. You wanna say hello to the video? Yeah, we're near the end. Thank you. <laughs> All right, bye. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, the artist has an amazing ability to make her presence felt around the map. And there are certain perks that can make it really, really nasty. We're going to bring Lethal Pursuer to see everyone at the start and know who to go for. Maybe avoid the buildings or areas that we know our power would not be so good at. And go for the people that are in the open, places where our birds are going to destroy them. And um, once we get that first down, all kinds of nasty things happen. If there's other people that need to heal, we will see them with barbecue and chili, which is nasty. If they're doing gems, we might also see them with barbecue and chili. Even if we don't see anyone with barbecue, guess what? We can send birds everywhere and that will make them pro- If they didn't get hit by pain rest and that man switch didn't block the gen, it's very likely that now they'll have to let go and then, you know, they can work on that gen and we can do other stuff. So we can passively trigger Deadman Switch and it's really, really nasty on artists. Uh, Add-ons to benefit from this. Velvet Fabric makes it easier to snipe people from afar. Um, Festering Carrion makes it faster to shoot one bird and then follow it up to threaten people from afar and up close. So these are this would be good options for this build. Festering uh, Velvet Fabric also helps in the in close range. If survivors are getting rid of birds, you still see their aura. So this is a solid build from up close and from afar. Uh, but there's other options. Let's see other builds and other add-ons uh, that you could consider. Uh, this one right here, very, very simple stuff. You have passive slowdown from deadlock on the gens. Every time one gets done, the next one gets a bit slower. And a delay on the exit gate. A delay with no it. And a delay that you're going to be able to see common thanks to Tinkerer. So the idea here is that with Tinkerer, we always know when gens are about to be done and we can do something about it and be really, really nasty. If you're particularly nasty and you know there's multiple survivors, you could also use Severed Hands, but we'll get into that in a minute. And the idea with Noid on Artists is that if you are 
um, if you are um, in a position where Noid hurts the survivors, you can constantly send birds towards it and interrupt the person doing the totem. So you can camp someone, get someone on the ground, and if the last person is trying to do Noid across the map, it doesn't matter if it's far, you can still defend it. It was part of the build that we used on our 50 wins on artists, and it is a nasty perk on her. If you want to play more tactical and less fun, this is a build for you. This, however, is a good compromise of the previous two. We have a bit of fun, but also some really nasty tactics. We bring discordance to know when multiple survivors are on a gen. If we are approaching, we can, um, we can just hit them with a normal bird. And if they remove the birds in front of us, we'll have Garden of Rot, which is going to be nasty. We'll be an insta down. And if we're at a bit of a distance, we can space out two birds. And with the severed hands, if you space out two birds just a little bit, just a little bit, just uh, just one second, the second person will take damage. Uh, we've also made videos about this if it's something you want to check out. Obviously, after you get a hook, we will do the same trick with Barbecue and Chili to find people and Deadman Switch. We can send birds and two others will have to let go of gens if they don't, don't want to take damage which will make that man switch trigger. And as the final perk, you could have no way out, you could have pain rest, you could have oh, corrupt intervention if you prefer it, you, but you probably don't need it. You could have any other perk that suits your needs. Either way, you probably will find a lot of success if you use these builds, but don't be limited by them. Artist is strong enough that if you understand her add-ons, you can try other stuff as well. Right, uh, apologies for that. I had to double check my notes. So Sadako is a little bit complicated because she just got reworked and it's very possible that she could experience further changes. So this is assuming that she doesn't get a lot of changes from her current form right now. So the idea with Sadako right now is to teleport as much as possible and put a lot of pressure on survivors, which will force them to pick up tapes. And if they do, then you want to ambush them. And if you do this, you still put out a lot of pressure. So. Uh, having passive slowdown add-ons like corrupt intervention or um, sorry no add-ons perks uh, having co having corrupt intervention deadlock and other perks to slow in the game at the start somewhat passively is a very good thing uh, with sloppy butcher you also get a similar thing where it will be harder and harder for them to stay injured you could even try not to down anyone let alone hook anyone for the first bit of the game to see how it progresses and a perk that really helps in doing this is face the darkness if the person if the first person you hit is hit with sloppy and you do not um you do not commit to them and you don't down them it will make everyone else consistently scream especially if you stay the manifesto for the most part uh we can have simple add-ons like well water to be undetectable for longer make this perk trigger more often and mothers come so that we can always know when someone's trying to pick up a tape and try to stop them and this is a very simple add-on that will probably resist quite well if survivors are picking up tapes and being smart but will definitely eat up any group of survivors that neglects picking up tapes because they'll find it real difficult to do gens and really difficult to do anything frankly a more gen oriented add-on could be something like this for instance we could have something to help us with chase a little bit like old newspaper maybe maybe Draco's watch if you still like it despite the small nerf and bloody fingernails so that we have a faster animation coming out of tbs and at the start we'll see everyone on lethal pursuer this will in enhance the auto ring from eruption and nowhere to hide and the idea here is definitely to go for hooks and also teleport to the gens that you think are being done and hit them religiously relentlessly uh, seeing anyone around you and trigger an eruption and then no matter what you do you will eventually be getting downs an eruption will trigger and hit those gens. Survivors need to worry about tips a little bit, but here you're putting most of the pressure onto the gens. Alternatively, you can do the opposite and let your perks be the ones pressuring the gens and focus almost entirely on the hit and run and the uh, buildup of, of Condemn. And this is the build for you. We're bringing again Face the Darkness, which is a perk that will make people scream and reveal themselves, interrupt their actions as well, critically, and show you their aura. It works only outside of Terror Radius, but this is not a big deal because we have a small uh, or non-existent Terror Radius. And we have the combination of Ruin and Thrill the Hunt, um, which will make gents regress whenever they're not being done. If survivors want to do tapes, they will have to uh, let go of gents. Ruin will do its thing. If they want to let, uh, to get rid of Ruin, they'll need to be on a totem for a 28 second period, which will probably not help with the Condemn and the other situations. And of course, you have Surveillance or Sloppy or some other perk uh, to either slow their healing or catch them when they touch the gents. Surveillance will let you know anytime they're regressing. If you want to go nuts, 
you can also bring the iridescent tape so that picking up a tape and delivering to the correct TV takes even longer and you get one whenever they try to do that. So builds like this will all be pretty consistently powerful with the current Sadako. We'll see if she evolves in some way. Next up, we have Dredge. Uh, Dredge definitely, definitely benefits from having a bit of early uh, slowdown because he does not start with his power. Uh, Sloppy Butcher is also an amazing perk. The longer people are injured, the faster you will build up your Nightfall. So this is a staple of, I would say, almost every good build on him. And then we can have the combination of Pain Resonance and Dead Man's Switch. And all of these perks, good on their own, good together, and very good with his add-ons. With the Automator and Raiden, you can start to teleport sooner and more often throughout the game. With the Lavalier Microphone, you make up for the lack of information. Notice that none of my perks here offer much information, but if we do all of the teleports, guess what? This perk will, uh, this add-on will show you the artists of everyone, which is a pretty big deal. And not only that, if a swabber is working on a generator next to a locker, the locker will flap open and make a noise, which will make them think that you're coming. This will make it so that if there are multiple survivors working on gens, it's very possible that after one teleport, all of them get spooked and make Deadman switch trigger, if they didn't make it trigger already from Pain Resonance. So this is a really, really, really solid combo if you are willing to use these relatively rare add-ons. Uh, another one that's a little bit more tactical relies on the usual uh, passive slowdown perks, No Way Out and Deadlock to help us in the mid game, Tinkerer. Anytime a gen gets done, we are very likely to be able to go there and stop it. And with Noed, let me tell you, if you pair this with a good timing, this can be lethal. Uh, the reason why Noed is so strong is because you don't need info in the early, in the late game. Obviously, you know where some of the gens are going to be done last with Tinkerer. But if Nightfall happens, you will be able to go around the map very quickly and detect people with your terror, with your killer instinct and then insta down them, which could lead to some really chaotic situations. The boat keys allows you to be fast with your teleports around uh, around the match and the worry stone gives you a bit of info on where the lockers are being locked you can go to the locker uh, or at least know that someone's near it and also it breaks all of the locks in the end game which means that in the end game even if they've locked a bunch of lockers and you've ignored them it doesn't matter you will be able to go anywhere you want and the lockers will be available to use with no slowdown which will make noid even more powerful if you want to lean on a more hit and run chaos inducing build these work very well especially against beginners and intermediate opponents uh, sloppy butcher again is a great choice uh, that will make in people in stay injured longer which will make the nightfall happen faster with the mall thinker skull corrupt intervention doesn't need to be explained at this point very strong perk to slow about to the start third seal is a very underrated pick uh, consider the fact that during nightfall survivors do not really see anything and often rely on artists from their perks or from their team teammates um uh, for example if they're on the hook they can see their teammates right and if they're on chase they can use windows opportunity with third seal they stop seeing all of that and many players immediately collapse and and turn from relatively coordinated survivors to completely dysfunctional team members so third seal can be really really strong uh, and you could also bring if you don't have lavalier microphone which we explain helps you find people you could also bring nurses calling or barbecue and chili both of which are very good to find people that are healing or doing gents that can be easily interrupted so this would also be a really really good build next up on wesker uh he is not quite as strong as Nurse or Blight, but he is also good enough that sometimes if you play his power well, his perks are not that important. So he can he can have a lot of pressure with his base kit alone. So let's make that even stronger. With Corrupt Intervention, obviously we're slowing down the pace at which survivors are doing gens at the start, giving us a chance to catch one of them off guard. Discordance to find multiple survivors would be a fine replacement. Let me replace it here so you see what that would look like. This would also be really, really good. Uh, keep in mind that you have a big terror radius, so knowing for sure where people are is valuable. So Corrupt or Discordance will achieve something similar, either buying you time or giving you directions. And then we have the Wombo combo of Pop and Pain Rest. This is just stupid. You down a survivor fast, which you will because you're Wesker, and guess what? Hook them, minus 25. Uh, go to the gen kick it, minus 30. But here's the thing. We can use these perks in a more advanced way with Thrilling Tremors. When you pick up a survivor, what you'll do with Thrilling Tremors is look around yourself. In the best case scenario, 
in the best case scenario, you down them so early that no gems are being done. That means every gem that you see is white and blocked. In that situation, hooking the closest possible hook, the closest possible non-scorch hook even, and don't worry about pop, just go around the map, find someone else, maybe listen to discordance if it's triggered, right? Uh, shortly after, for example. However, if you see a gen that is not blocked, if you're close, you can try to hook nearby to pop it immediately. If you're far, you can try to go to a pain rest to hook there, pain rest that hook, and then go and pop it. So with this combination of these three perks, you basically know exactly at any given point what, how exactly you're going to give them the left, the right, and then say goodnight. Because you will be saving pain rests when they're not useful and hitting them with pop every single time. The only downside of Thrill and Tremors, of course, is its little cooldown that might come into play. But if you're getting a cooldown too often, that means you're getting lots of down, so that's not bad. Use your favorite add-ons here, nothing really matters. Um, oh, by the way, let's say that you're not super familiar with him. You don't know which add-ons to run. Uh, this add-on makes it less punishing to misuse your power. This add-on gives you more cooldown. These are good to learn the game. Uh, I personally favor the Unicorn Medallion. I like the way it changes my dashes. Some people like to run the Jewel Beetle and maybe even the Roar Medallion. Uh, because it just, sorry, that's an Elden Ring item. The Lion Medallion, because it makes it easier to slam people into things. Whatever you want to do, this build can probably take it all. Next up, we have a more tactical build. We have the typical Deadlock, um, uh, passive slowdown pick, which will make gen stacks a little bit longer. This is good because it will let us have more coup de grass stacks. This is a perk that got recently buffed, and it's actually really nice on Wesker. It's a similar concept as we said with Demogorgon in in loops where Wesker's power is easy to use, that are straight and 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 easy to, to dash into, you use your power and you're fine. But if they ever take you on a little rock or a little round car or some other obstacle where you can't really use your power, then you have two tokens of coup de grace to immediately hit them if they get greedy on a pallet. Sometimes what can happen is that they drop a pallet, you vault the pallet, and then you chase around them, and because of cool, you can hit them before they make it back. So. Coup de Grass is actually a nice learning perk on Wesker. It can also make it easier to land insta downs with no one escapes death or insta downs with Iridescent Ouroboros Bile. This add-on makes it so that once a survivor is fully infected for a little bit, not only can you grab them and insta down them, you can also hit them and insta down them. So you have both options. In the end game, we have no way out for obvious reasons. It goes so well with no it blocks the exit gets for a while. It's going to work out really well. More time to use Coup de Grass and passively survivors will get infected more and more often with the video conference device. So green add-on by the way now um I, I did forget to mention by the way in the first build if you want to take a more uh active approach on the gens you could replace tinkerer uh thrilling tremors for tinkerer or even barbecue to know when a gen's gonna get done and you could also bring eruption if you prefer it over pain dress. you would be surprised uh this is very very viable on him as well and now for the final build I recommend, Hexes. Devour Hope is disgusting on this guy. Uh, Plaything works really well. Either of these totems are hard to ignore, especially Devour if you get a few downs. And they'll have to do it. And while they do that, you have Throw the Hunt to slow them down. Maybe even Infectious Fright as your fourth perk to make them interrupted. Uh, you could run Infectious Fright here, for example. Um, uh, Infectious Fright wouldn't pair well with Plaything because they won't react to your terror radius. But let's say you don't like Plaything, you can put this here. And now every time you down someone, anyone around you screams and interrupts totems. And totems take a long time to get done during that time. They can get interrupted or they can get fully infected thanks to this add-on. And that will be, uh, if you notice that in the HUD, you can look and you'll see their aura. Anyway, if you get a few downs, Devour Hope becomes incredibly powerful. If they manage to cleanse a few of the totems, now you can hit them with Pentimento, which is a really nasty perk on this killer because they have to worry about infection, they have to worry about gens, and now they have to worry about gens being slower or even heals being slower, and they need to cleanse this. So it really overwhelms them from every direction and is very, very strong. Next up, we have the Knight. Now, my favorite build, personally, uh, I am maybe slightly biased, is a build around using the Carnifex. The Carnifex is the default first guard that is really good at breaking pallets. So with the Battlehead Axe, we have two of them. And then we also bring the Map of the Realm because it's a solid add-on that lets your guards catch people more often. We have Corrupt Intervention and the typical slowdown from Pain Res and, uh, and Jolt 
this will hit uh, uh, this will hit gents when you down them this will hit gents when you hook the subaru for the first time and then we have say the best for last and we're gonna get close and personal we're gonna be a melee brawler uh, we're gonna chase people anytime they drop a pallet we're gonna use the double card effects to roll through the pallets go right through them uh, there's even a little trick where you can pull up pull a guard out while the um, while the pallet's being dropped and instantly destroy it and then with jolt and say the best for last, we're going to be downing people super quickly. If they ever get unlucky enough to have multiple people going down next to the same gen, you're going to be slamming them with your sword over and over and triggering jolt without cooldown many, many times. This is personally my favorite way to play the knight and the one I found most consistent, but not the only one. This other build is a bit more inter interested in the information that you gain from Ruin and Pain Rest. Anytime they let go of a gen or they touch a gen that was regressing, um, Thanks to Ruin, uh, Surveillance will let you know where a Subaru is. It will be hard for them to get rid of Ruin thanks to Undyne. You could also replace it by another trap perk like Haunted, which would be really, really nasty and probably quite unexpected on him. Uh, and then we have Painters also to help slow down gens and keep up and trigger surveillance so that we know if you hook a survivor with Painters, you'll hear a scream, you look around, you'll see which, which gen uh, turns yellow with surveillance. So the idea is that we know where the gens are being done and we have the means to stop it. We can use the call to arms add-on to put a guard right on top of a, of a gen. We can also just kick it if we want to, but you can use it to either kick it or put it right next to it and then catch a survivor. And what that's going to do with the map of the realm or the hor dried horse meat, you will be having a lot of pressure on survivors so from a distance. And it's a really easy build to run. This one is a bit of an advanced version of this. We have discordance to let us know when survivors are working together. And again, we're going to send guards from a distance. Fear monger to make it harder for them to react or spimbers away. Uh, and then pop goes the weasel. Anytime we get it down, we will be harassing the gents that get picked up by discordance. We also have an, a, a really interesting perk that could be easily replaced by anything else on me wrong but it's a bit of a novelty and it's quite interesting and it's gearhead if you injure a survivor and gearhead is on you will occasionally see other survivors that are splitting up um doing gens uh, on their own and with gearhead and the call to arms you can send a guard to them and either harass them or sometimes even get down from a distance because if you send a guard far enough they they catch up a little bit sooner to the survivor so this is a bit of a assassin uh search and destroy type of build you could easily replace gearhead however with something a little bit more chase oriented or more um or less situational such as jolt if you prefer it and something like this would still be really really solid Next up, the Skull Merchant, and this killer is not the most complex, but uh, <laughs> believe it or not, there are several ways to play it. The one that I've seen be most consistent and and most fun, frankly, is is this very simple one, which is slow, best slow down, best slow down, best slow down. With pop, you're gonna have to be a bit aware. Obviously, you need to know which gens are being done, and then a bit of a safety in the form of bamboozle. With bamboozle, any troublesome troublesome building, you can definitely play around or make the pallet go out really really quickly. And anything else, you are going to shred. If you set up. Um, with Corrupt, obviously, at the start, there's only going to be a few gens available, and you can trap some of them with your drones to slow them down and give yourself spud, uh, sp speed. Um, I don't want to know what spud means. And once you are in chase with someone else, you can also set a drone on a smaller loop, and the randomized throws will give them like a mini clown speed debuff. This, plus your normal debuff, plus, the debu plus your normal buff of speed that you get from the geographical readout, makes you a somewhat fearsome chase killer that can actually speed up quite significantly think of it like a clown that throws bottles in a passive manner while also controlling gens and that's more or less what the skull merchant can do with a build like this you get faster everything faster movement faster break-in they get slowed down and you still have tools to defend everything and deal with almost every loop in the game Next up, we go to my personal favorite, the one that I've used uh, to to do my uh, personal winstick on this killer, which is a a variation, not exactly, but because I didn't use this purple, but a variation of a totem build. So the idea here is that you're going to go for very aggressive early 
uh, chases, sure, but you're also going to take a little bit of time to protect some of your totems. You have two of them, ideally you protect one or both. And survivors going into them, become blind and lose a bit of information. And also you see their artists so that you can judge whether or not they're worth disturbing. If they're trying to do your totems, you're going to disturb them. Most of the times they're going to try to do gens because you don't have corrupt here. You know, there's no corrupt, so they're going to do gens right away. And you might lose a few gens early on, but once you start to get devour hope, you will be faster from devour, faster from your power. Um, they will begin to be insta down. They will need to go through to sometimes multiple totems to get rid of your power. And um, if you if you get that one inch, they will give you the rest of the mile very easy. They will fall apart super easily. If they somehow, somehow, somehow manage to do the totems, you can also relight them with Pentimento, which will slow on the gems to a crawl, and then put drones around the Pentimento so that they have to do it all over again. In the background, to help support us, we can have Deadlock, a perk to slow on gems passively, or if you want to go full aggressive mode, uh, Blood Favor is also great. It's another hex that if they get rid of, you can uh, light up with Pentimento, which is great. And it also makes your first chase a little bit easier. I think this is actually the build uh, in terms of perks that I had. Minus, minus this add-on. I had a different one. I might have had... I think, I think my exact build was this. But yeah. Or this, rather. But yeah, this is it. This is really, really strong. Now... Maybe even stronger still is the is the four is the <laughs> is the one hour hold hostage uh, classic three gen build. Now I'm gonna tell you right now. I mentioned this here because it's undoubtedly effective in the current scope merchant. Hopefully she gets a rework, and I'm gonna tell you how it works just so that you maybe know how to play against it. But please don't do it yourself. You're not gonna get better at playing scope merchant in my opinion. You're not gonna honestly practice too much because you're just going to be kicking gents half the game and it's going to be a bad time for the survivors as well but the idea of this build is that um you're going to focus on three gens either at the start or throughout the game and you're going to defend them very aggressively survivors trying to do those three gens will be oblivious which means that no matter what you're doing they're always going to be a little bit um less aware of your location and also the skill checks will be harder the skill checks can come from either uh, from either oppression or overcharge both of them are a good idea as well or jolt and then you're gonna have the perks eruption and sloppy to support you sloppy will make resetting their health states harder and eruption will make it so that you go kick 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 and then when you get it down you can commit a little bit to the hook and you will not lose gens you can still come back and destroy them this is a really disgusting disgusting build that's just you know e e even the very long cooldown on oppression doesn't matter because the match is probably going to last 15 or 20 minutes before they give up or bleed out on the ground. So, yeah, that's how it works, but I highly advise against it. Next up, we have the Singularity, the latest killer. Uh, if you want a very simple build to follow that doesn't require any super long-term planning, this is one of them. We're going to use the add-ons to have a longer overclock, which is never a bad thing, and extra biopods, which is never a bad thing, two very appropriate brown add-ons. There's also one that makes it harder for them to know where the EMPs are, and you can rely on it as well. Probably not too bad. We'll buy you a bit of time. Uh, Sloppy Butcher, solid perk on him. Makes every injury you do a little bit harder to shake off. With Eruption and Jolt, we have an interesting interaction, okay? When you... When you hit a survivor when you hit a gen with jolt it doesn't apply eruption but what you can do is is defend the gens very aggressively kick them and then if survivors go down near them the eruption will hit them and the jolt will hit them so that means that that gen if not uh done successfully will take a minus 18 if someone goes down next to it and then obviously you can have know it which will give you a big boost of lethality in the end game this is a bit of a build if you want to just go around and not pay too much attention if you want to be a little bit more focused this is something i've seen someone pull off with quite a bit of success we have the big slowdown from pain rest and pop goes the weasel we are a pretty strong character in the early game that can play around palace and windows relatively well so we don't need corrupt as much and then we have the the combo of this is an interesting one enduring and hubris so the idea with enduring is that we're going to be very aggressive around pallets and not really going to mind them at all um if we get stunned by a pallet and the survivor is out of the infected sleep stream what we're going to do is as soon as we get stunned and we recover immediately with enduring we're going to teleport to that survivor 
and hubris will give us an insta down. Now, the nice thing about the the nice thing for the survivors about hubris is that normally they make a lot of distance after stunning you. So let's say that we're at Shaq, right, or something, and you drop the pallet on the killer, and now if you hold forward, by the time the killer breaks the pallet and catches up, hubris is gone. It's only 20 seconds. But the idea with this is that once you get stunned, you teleport after, and they don't make that distance, and they and the, the 20 seconds actually really really good. Keep in mind that if you get stunned by a pallet while you're in overclock. You don't really get stunned, so Hubris doesn't trigger, and Enduring doesn't trigger, but it's a free hit anyway, so that's not a big deal. If survivors are making that mistake, that's perfect anyway. Uh, what to pair with this? Uh, you can pair the Expand Oxygen Tank to make sure that they do not um, get to use perks like Mate for this or, or other Exhaustion perks in Chase. You could bring the Foreign Plant Fibers, which would make it a little bit nicer if they drop a power on you while you're overclocked. Or if you teleport to a survivor that vaults a pallet and then you insta break it. And the Soma family photo giving you extra speed is a really, really good thing and goes really well with this build as well, as far as I could tell. Another build that I personally tried a little bit more has to do with hexes again. We have Devour. If you get a few downs at the start and you're threatening to use this perk, survivors cannot ignore it. And if they want to get rid of it, they first have to go through Undying. When they try to go through Undying, they might accidentally cleanse Haunted Ground. If they're unlucky, they might cleanse Haunted Ground twice. If they're really, really unlucky, they might cleanse Haunted Ground twice. And then you might be able to set up Pentimento so that the totems are constantly harassing them. If you are confident in your early game and you struggle with the rest, this build might be for you. We could go for the add-on that makes them mango to add uh, insult to injury, and maybe even the add-on to make them hear the terror radius if they are constantly um, um, sleep stream. So the idea behind this is that you would put pads uh, little pods next to your totems, and if you hit survivors with those pods, they'll hear a terror radius that's fake. They'll hear a... And if you are approaching... They won't know that you're approaching until you're actually a little bit close. So it's going to put them on the edge and make it even harder to deal with these things. But honestly, at this point, no add-ons or any add-ons would do just fine. Uh, notice that this is a killer that wants to... Uh, he has um, he has good pressure in chase, but he doesn't necessarily end chases really fast by the fact that he doesn't insta-down. That's why Noid, Sloppy to prevent them from healing, um, Hubris in this case and Haunted or Devour and any other Lethality perk is kind of nice on him. Save the best for us is not as important as it would be, for example, on the Clown because he can he can teleport and, and the gap doesn't matter so much. But any perk that helps to insta-down or make each down really significant is something that you want to consider on him. I know some people argue or ask, oh, should we run Bamboozle on, on this killer because it will make the, the fastball even faster? And the, the idea, or, or Superior Anatomy, I don't think you should run Fire Up or Superior Anatomy, but I have seen some people argue that Bamboozle can be used um, maybe in a, in a build like this for some decent effects. If this helps you be more consistent in your downs and that powers up the rest of your perks, uh, I say go for it. Other than that, um, you might have noticed that I've been trying to use my favorite cosmetics on each of these killers. Every time you've seen one of these killers, that has been my favorite cosmetic on each of them. So that's a little uh, fun fact about this video. And again, if anything seems weird or if any killer gets a change or if any perk gets an update by all means go to my uh website or the little thing that i have here it is uh or the little slide to see the updated versions of this build either way don't don't play a build that's not fun for you sometimes playing a build that is objectively worse leads to more fun matches so i hope you balance everything i just told you with your own intuition of what's going to be most fun for you i'll be seeing you and thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.